Hello everybody and welcome back to Wampleville. We got day three of our virtual ReaperCon. Or is yeah, it is day three. Already getting mixed up on my days. We got more Reaper figures for you here and we got more oil paints. We had a couple of the new these are those Gen 3 plastics. We painted one on the first day. Oh, like so, right here. Working with our oils. Oh, thank you, Sikich. Sikich. Just let me know if that is actually how it gets pronounced. Because I always seem to just do the names slightly wrong. Hey there, Armored Wolf. There's our intrepid moderator in the house. I just, I heard, I looked at the clock and I went, oh, Kathy is supposed to be done with her stream, like, now. So we better go live. We got two different types of bases right here. Now, this one was done with one of the Green Stuff World texture rollers. Oh, look at this. Look at this. The, Mo the Rohirrim have already been mustered. Here they are. Ride to ruin. And the world's ending. There we go. Well, ReaperCon hasn't ended yet. Oh, we have Ecto in the house, too. How are you doing? So, folks, if you're not already following Might of Art of Mike Disney, you'll want to do that because, well, he painted one of these with me. Gosh, was it even wasn't even a week ago? Yeah. Oh no, it was a week ago tonight that Mike and I we were doing one of these lovely babies sculpted by Valandar the Red. <laughs> we got we got more mustering of the Rohirrim, so let's find more Rohirrim. Well, we have more Rohirrim. Yes, we do. We have this lovely dude here. Yeah, check him out. Also based on Cork. Let's see, we got Queez. We got Megan in the house. <coughs> How are you guys doing today? Now, has anybody here taken any uh, classes today at Virtual ReaperCon? And yes, we're doing oils again. So we're going to get some of these guys out of the way, like our berry white green. Uh, that's, I think everything just is going to go over in there. Now, some of the things that we were painting last night, uh, I think this is the 2018... Sophie right now. Now I have still not working. And there's Kathy with her big raid. Raiding in with the party of seven. So that sound certainly works. And there's an Al Capone in the house. Yeah, here's another oh here's another one of the ones we were working on yesterday. Our our cleric right here, Bruce the Cleric with his free hand. We were doing her freehand with the oils. Hello, Mobrock. How are you doing? And we got a Ford Fitch. Ford Fitch in the house, boys. So, hey, Ford, did you take any classes? Oh, hey, Druckster. How are you doing? I uh, just, I, I got to ask. Yeah, that's kind of what I'll be doing is asking who's taking, who's taking classes at ReaperCon. So we're going to start all these the usual way with the oils. Uh, let me see. Oh, you got to hear the raid sound, too? That's cool. Well, hopefully everybody can hear me, because it says my mic and audio are doing their thing. Now, this, I was thinking of doing the, the same thing I did on a Bones color scheme here. So I'm going to scroll down here to some of my Reaper pictures. Now, yeah, this one's metal, but see that Bones version right there? I was thinking of doing something along those lines. That could be really fun. So we'll do something like that. We got the skulls in the same spot right over there by her foot. About to catch her cloak on fire. So I think that should be a very fun little thing. Basically trying to do some kind of object source lighting with each one here. Uh, let's see. Ford might be doing a class on Sunday. And yeah, let's see. Oh, welcome back to uh, 460 of Reaper on Quarantine. Pixel Cat in the house. Where's Pixel Cat? How are you doing? Oh, there she is. How are you doing? Oh, and there's there a Felonius monk? It means we got a Felonius red, and yes, we do have our Capone green right here. That's what that's going to be called from now on. Especially since I'm starting to use it more and more and more. I kind of didn't use it all for a while. Let me see. Do we have anything else? Uh, I think we're all... Go oh, we have Kid Quartz back in the... Hey, how are you doing? I'm going to see if I can't squeeze a little bit of this. Uh, I forgot to mix up some more of this. So it's the Cadmium Green 
pale. We'll see if we can get some of this out of, out of ye old container here. Otherwise, we'll just do it the old-fashioned way with a brush. Oh, yeah. There's, there's still some left in here to dig out. There we go. This is it's just kind of a handy-dandy color to have. And, and, of course, it's one that I keep spreading around all over the place because where it is on the palette tends to end up on the side of my hand, and then that tends to end up everywhere else for whatever reason. I guess that's just a bad place to be putting it. We got our sponges handy here. We got some more paint rags because we need these guys. So that means now that Kathy can go grab some of the potatoes that are on the oven and some of her soup, mixing it with the potatoes, making it almost like a mashed potatoes and gravy. And we got Moe's in the house. Uh, let me see. An angry ham. How are you doing? We're just going to start hitting our little pre-glaze on this. I know Kathy's been painting this for her quad color challenge. We're there's a, there's a bit of Mike Disney about this right here. I don't know. We might have to give him a black hat with the Detroit Tiger symbol on there. We might we might just have to do him more, but that could be that could be hilarious. We may just have to do that. I think we may have just settled on a color scheme because I know I think uh, hers is sort of a weeby homage, and this might have to be a Disney homage right here. Uh, is that not the beard? And he's got the hat, and there's enough space for that Detroit Light Tigers logo on there. Uh, let's see. Cleaning the whip wounds is lashing me with. Uh, I got that effect on humanoid. Oh, and Numbskull's sitting around here. Ah, there's Numbskull. He does look like Mike a little, doesn't he? Now, we'll hit our little pirate lady here because, well, we sculpted this little base for her on Monday. But we want to hit her up with some bottles, just like we did here in a previous stream. I think it'll be a heck of a lot more fun painting these here bottles in oils than it was in acrylic. Well, painting anything with oils kind of more fun than acrylics anyway. Now what we have too is another one here. This one is this one's dry in here because we want to be doing some waterfall stuff. Where the heck did she go? There she is. There we go. So see that kind of extended? We want to put the waterfall over here. We want to have a waterfall coming down right here. We want to have all this foliage and stuff going on. But I just figured I'd paint this as soon as I could so that by Sunday this would be dry. And, and the idea is that in the afternoon Sunday we just do a quick little session to do the first layer of the water effect so that by the nighttime and the evening session, like after 11 o'clock, that would be dry, and we could hit it again with some more water effects. But speaking of hitting things, palette over here. Oh yeah, the the Burgermeister, Mike the Burgermeister. That's what it, that's what it's gonna have to be, Mike the Burgermeister. Oh look at this, we got Drax in the house. Let's see, gotta run to the store real quick, but figured I'd get you a view. Oh thanks, Drax, and folks, be sure to give Drax the follow. Uh, let me see. Angry Him asks, how many years would tonight's session be at least 10 years long? At least in your years. Oh, and look at this. We got, we got Lord Dave. So Dave, actually, while well, speaking of classes, this is one of our instructors for Reprecon. How have the, how has the class instruction been going? I got to know. Uh, and Kathy's going to go eat her chow. So, be, yeah, you're... Your soup is in the fridge, but your taters are still on the oven. Let's get our brushes here, and let's just uh, review a little bit. Titanium white, brilliant yellow pale, faux cadmium yellow light, faux cadmium yellow deep, terra rosa, yellow ochre, felonious red, otherwise known as fanchion red. That's kind of our faux alizarin crimson. I think it's called permanent crimson. Our Egyptian violet, brown matter, Thalo blue, blue gray, cerulean blue. Uh, there are cadmium green light, our capone green, ivory black, indigo, van dyke brown. We saved it for last because the last shall be first. 
and we're going to mix up a couple of different things here. We're going to obviously make use of some of our thinner, and we're going to blast away at this like so. Uh, let me see. Uh, Lord Dave did a water effects cut. Speaking of water effects, that's right. I knew that was like your, that was the big class. I remember your test piece that you showed me a while back. Uh, wow, 120 people and no technology issues. Actually, the first thing is fantastic. The second thing is way cool. <laughs> because, yeah, technology issues, and there's no rhyme or reason to them. There is literally no reason for any of those things to happen. They just kind of do. Uh, let's see. You need to give Mike a kicking Kelly green vest. What, where's this thing here? Well, he does have a vest. Let me see. Is that all just his overcoat there? Or is that a shawl? Should we give him a shawl because Mike is cold? Uh, let me see. What else do we got here? I hope you, uh, like 10 years, what I do hope time flows a bit differently and it's just 10 hours. Well, geez, 10 hours, that's for rookies. I mean, that, that's for that's for rookies and kids, baby. We don't measure time here in hours, we measure it in years. But all kidding aside, it will, it'll go kind of as long as the technology allows me, speaking of technology, but we will stop at a certain point in the evening because, well, A, even if I didn't have to sleep, the voice needs, it needs some time off because this is high, st <coughs> high stress on the voice. It's already getting me. Oh, and look at this. Pixel Cat is on the move. Pixel Cat is doing the thing with the... Oh, and look at the Holly Monster and Peace Oh, and uh, Asmodeus. Oh, Fenris Wolf. That's another name I haven't seen in a little while. But thank you so much for the subs. Now, I did, speaking of the sub sound, the So Say We All, the so we all I double-checked on the, the Streamlabs thing, and when someone resubs, there should be a sound, at least according to the thing, there so should be a sound. So like the So Say We All. Is there a beef in the hole in the house? I got something to show you, Beef, in case you haven't seen it. We also have Cosmic Cubicle. Hey, how are you doing? So say we all. So say we all. That is definitely celebrating ReaperCon in, in, style, in style, Pixel Kit. It, it means a lot. And, and it's, it's, it's definitely showing up, too. It is massively showing up. So, folks, all those follows, bits, cheers, and everything... They really do mean a whole bunch. It's pretty wild. I I didn't really know what to expect with the Twitch thing because I was used to the YouTube way of doing things. And, oh, this is a little bit different. Yes. <laughs> different better, that's for sure. Uh, Cosmic Cubicle has taken a, a little break from the table build. Actually, table build sounds really fun. But I can understand why you would also need a break from it, because table builds, as exciting as they can be, they can reach a point where it's just, oh my gosh, this is not easy. This has been a lot, a lot of repetitive things, too, so I can definitely see where you might need a break from that. Let me see. So, yeah, as Beef in the Hole says, 47 hours, 47 minutes remaining. Let me see, uh, waiting from work day to end. What kind of table? Oh, a, a, ah, the recess table, though, and those, speaking of challenges, those are challenges. So, Beef, this is a, oh, unfortunately, I, I was supposed to post it to the Patreon page, but I sort of forgot about that in all the madness here. But, uh, remember that red dragon we were talking about? So, there, uh, there's a fun little thing for us to paint. That might be the Monday. That may, might be part of our Monday extravaganza there. Because Saturday we've got a griffin that we are going to be painting. Well, among other things. So we'll, we'll see about that. Now let's get some of our... Let's get some reds out here. 
And speaking of reds, we're going to do a little bit of our felonious red here, just to get the party started on this. Because all this is, is a little bit of a pre-glaze. You notice this is not as thin down, maybe, as other the other layers have been. Or other colors, I suppose I should say. Let me see. Uh, going at a, th a a thick edge all around. Oh, new power tools. Finish the armor on my space marines using the oil. Oh, patacane. So how did that work out? Actually, I hope that worked out good. Like I said, once this is all over with, there, there's going to see a lot of 40k stuff. Well. You'll see some 40k and AOS. You'll be seeing an awful lot, well, just GW stuff in general, you're going to see a lot of. And, and we're also long-term trying to maybe plan some sort of Orktober thing as well, because there are Orc things here that I think could be really interesting for oils. Let's get some of our sponges out here. Sponge. There's a scissors here somewhere. Uh, let's see. Panda came painted for five minute bursts every 20 minutes and I uh, was working. Oh, it was so relaxing. There we go. So I know. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of uh, orc figures that. I also have to find my def copters if I can find those. And then there was the, oh, what the heck? What was the big, it wasn't the war wagon or something like that. Now, now this gold gets the bits war going. Look who's out here in no time at all. He's just grabbing all those. And she says, uh-uh, those are mine. He says, ah. And he goes away. But thanks, numbskull. Thanks for the bits. This should be really interesting. Man, I, I wish I could have uh, brought this up as a little bit of a reference picture on screen for you. Well, we'll just we'll toggle back to the original one. Again, that was a bones miniature. This one is the this one is the actual metal here. We're just removing what we can. Battle wagon. Thanks, Cosmic Cubicle. We have we have an orc bag. It's it's like still, it's not just new in the box. I think it's still shrink wrapped. I could be wrong, but I think it still has shrink wrap on it. And we're talking 2012, 2013 is when we might have gotten that sucker. So that that's going back a ways. And those def as well, you know where those came from. Speaking of starter sets like Indominus. Alright, so she's all set. Look at the look at the difference that makes already. Let's hit Mr. I just for some reason started calling him the town crier. I'm not sure why. Maybe he's just reading lots of bad news here on his on his do thingy. So let's just hit him up real quick with some Stuff here. Oh, what the heck. Let's hit him with a little bit of the brown matter here, too. That's a nice translucent color. I just got to make sure I don't have any finished figures out here, because when you do this, this has a, shall we say, a blast radius or an area of effect. And you don't want to have miniatures sitting around. It's the same for the acrylic side of things. Oh, look, let's put a little indigo blue in here. I think we're going to do more of the indigo blue on our our faux Mike Disney. Uh, let's just make sure we got surfaces covered here before we hammer away at them with some sponges. And we got Nessie in the house and Hugh Hefner. Uh, let me see. Uh, and Gurney, how are you doing? And Jonas. Uh, looks pretty well brushed. Uh, let's see. That's why I dig about three layers into the lumber to, oh, to pick out those boards. I mean, I'm going to scroll up here because we had some questions there. So, 
Uh, what primer do you use underneath these oils? And it is Steinol Res. It's Badger Steinol Res. Now, they have about 18. I think they might even have 20 colors by now. So this is the red-brown. Is this the sandy? Oh, it's the, the light flash one. And yes, you can brush this on because, well, that's what I did here. That's just brushed on. And where's my other row? So I did an entire army painting series. Every single one of my Rohan guys, I brushed down the primer. And you can see no problem whatsoever. Now I'm going to start scrolling back down on here. Uh, we got Gurney. We got our Nessie in there. Uh, I smell Necrons for 40k. The AOS stuff is a, well, it's uh, Asiarch Bone Reapers. Now, they're actually assembled. Well, there's a bunch of them assembled, so they will probably lead the way. But then after those guys are the Lumineth, and we are going to start assembling those after this week. I can see I, this never got glued in there. So we will glue him in in just a second here. However, we do want to just wipe as much of this away as we can. Like so. And we'll just set him aside. Now look at the difference again, what that makes. That was just a couple of simple things. Some brown, some of the brown matter alizarin, a little bit of that indigo. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's see, so I logged in and heard our faux Mike Disney. Where, there's there's faux Mike Disney right there. We're going to make him, I mean, look at this. He even has his own self-portrait on the base right there. Uh, let's see, the indigo on the figure yesterday was so nice when it was all down. I love the tree. Oh, and the swirl, that's on the, uh, that was on her. This was really, this was a, a fun. Actually, I still will maybe go back in and play around with some things on the base if there is some time. This was a lot of fun, putting those greens, mixing those in with the wings. And this is still, it's still a little bit workable. I don't want to say it's wet, wet, but I could actually still work that a little bit. But now, so here, these were the ones that we worked on on Monday, right? See, I'm touching this, doing all the stuff. Nothing wrong with this guy. So he is dry. He's all good to go. Uh, let's see, Pixel Cat asks, so I tried this technique, wiping off the oils with the Reaper brush and the paint tore. I tried it with no primer and too much wipes off. The Steiner Res, well, you've seen how the Steiner Res just handles, well, everything. Now here we're going with our, again, our indigo blue here. Man, maybe a little bit of thinner into that. Just a bit of thinner. I'm not sure. Well, Mike has a bum knee, right? So that's why he's got a peg leg. This really is. This is definitely Mike Disney's figure right here. It truly is. And we'll we'll give him some black. We'll give him the Kelly green vest as was requested. Oh, thanks, Ingraham. Now, we did do... Where's our other guy that we... Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's Bert the Cleric right there and we were messing around with a wee bit of freehand on him too so he was fun doing a little bit of object source Hello, lighting Spark my ganja. Uh, let's see that was the uh, faux mike disney not our foe uh yep <laughs> he is we he He's not a foe of the channel, but this is a foe. Unless this is Mike Disney and the other one is the imposter. Maybe this is the real Mike Disney. Oh, Primal Ace, thank you so much for the bits. He's going to try and nibble that last one that's in that cup. And he's going to try... Uh-oh. He was too late. And foe Mike Disney chases him away. Previous, I would prime with various Reaper liners, and that works awesome for acrylics. So, yeah, the uh, the Badger Steiner res here, you've seen me. I think Pixel Kit, have you seen me using stuff like the, the rubbing alcohol and the weathering powders? And it definitely doesn't wipe away. Now, that was a metal one we just did. This one, obviously, is the Gen 3 Plastics. This one will be another metal one, and 
where's there? Oh, here we go. So this is a standard bones right here. We did the same thing on this one. And I do believe that, I don't know if that one's still a, a viewable VOD or not. Alternate universe Mike from uh, Earth 234. Uh, Mike at the Renaissance Fair. Oh, this, yeah, it, he's uh, his ears must be burning somewhere. His ears must be burning somewhere. Look at look at the difference this makes. Check out this. Does that not give you a little different of a look with that indigo blue as opposed to more of those warm browns and such? Look at this. It almost looks black but it's not black it's seriously as indigo blue just punctuated by some van dyke brown in a few places okay i think uh that's in it well you can see the difference between these two now look at the difference here oh let's see i tried it on toxic one that does not work i'm trying to oh from schminky okay um, now, if you're wondering what else I have used, now, for obviously the folks in Europe, this is going to be easier to get. The reason why I got the Mona Lisa from Speedball is because that was easier for me to get. But this is about the closest equivalent to that that I have found so far. Yep, our preparation glaze, like, and you can see the difference. See how warm this is, and you see we got the cooler colors over here now we're going to save this one in case people want to see that process again but we'll set those two aside we come back around to this and what was it we were looking to do with this we're going to go back to our reaper picks here and we will find there it is boom so the one on the left there that is what we're going to try and do this time around and we'll see what we can do with that the prep glaze phase for sure And when we're wiping our brushes off and cleaning our brushes, what do we mean by that? We're just literally taking a rag and we're just doing this. We are not dipping these in any kind of cleaner spirits. It, we save that until we're just done with the work session. And you're going to see a lot of paper towels that look an awful lot like this. And you can see that gets an awful lot of the paint out of there. It means that we can still dive in here and get back to our paint. So here we're going to use this for some of our red. And by some of our red, I'm talking about a little cadmium scarlet, which we will... I'm going to start working this out here, too. We don't need a lot, because you'll see just how this... I mean, it has some impressive coverage. That's certainly what we were using here. Now on this, you can really see how intense that is. I don't think we ever actually used any of the fluorescent oranges on that. In fact, I'm pretty sure we didn't. But as always, we want this to be less paint, less is more, more is way too much. Now, we don't necessarily want to have a whole lot of lighting out here. We're just going to give a little suggestion of that. We have to figure out some kind of really dark marble. I'm just thinking some indigo type color, maybe punctuated by some thalo blues and such. Look at how that's going to immediately impact all of this area. That's because we've got ourselves now a, a lighter opaque color. And yes, with the oils, your lighter colors are going to be more opaque colors. It's just kind of how that works with the oils. I know it seems really weird. I think these reach all the way over to here, too. Is that going to reach up to her face? Maybe. Maybe not. But you can see how it's picking up that purple, right? We have got to go back. we got to get some clean paint on that brush. Uh, it's a personal choice. Uh... Oh, hey, Loim. How are you doing? Uh, kit quartz, uh, do you alternate brushes for light and dark colors? No, actually, the only brushes that really get alternated at all 
would be the the blending brushes so right you know let's say this ends up being my blending brush this just as a blending brush and maybe I have a second one here in case the first blending brush just gets a little bit too dirty because you don't want to have liquids in those blending brushes if you do well then you run into that kind of logical issue of you got a wet brush and now you're just sloshing paint around and potentially wiping it off. Now look, we're even going to hit a little bit of maybe some lighting over here too. Now this is a little bit different than our uh, the one that you saw in that photo because, well, it's a, it's a bigger base. It's a little more expansive. I figured it's the metal one. It's actually just, it's always been kind of a fave for me as far as Reaper figures go. Uh, let me see, Chrysalids in the UK Stino Res is also being branded as Ultimate Primer. Oh yeah, did someone mention the One Shot Primer? Yeah, MIG Ammo One Shot is Stino Res. <laughs> it, it's Stino Res for sure. Because I was in the Reaper factory, or in the uh, Badger factory and we saw all the jars of one shot being made there so it is definitely a badger product which means it's dino res let's see how that starts to take shape now now we're not going to mess with that anymore we're just going to leave that alone and once again look at this we're going to give our brushes a thorough cleaning look at this look at how thorough that cleaning is <laughs> uh, that's about as far as we take it that is it uh, let me see. Angryham, uh, rumor is it that I'm prepping to repaint some ancient minis as your induction, introduction to oils. Hey, that could be fun. I think you'll actually like that. Uh, let's see. I get tempted with the white. Somehow I always feel if I don't put a bunch in the brush, it won't get a bright white. And Numskull says I ten have a tendency to use the other side of the brush for more paint coverage, which I think you've seen me do that here too where I just say, well, the one side of this brush is kind of dirty. Here, let's turn it over and use the other side. Now, I think we'll just go with this dark... Oh, we got we got another flamey skull. Flamey skull alert. I didn't see that. Flamey skull. We'll start out with a little bit of our felonious red here. Now, that's not going to cast any, any stuff up on her, but it is going to make some differences down here. Wow, we got we got light sources galore. Uh, let's see. We'll see how long Jim goes before he even adds white and then it's uh, just a little bit. Yeah. I think we're actually, we might actually be caught up on stuff here. And, and folks, I'm always, I apologize if I miss something in the chat. If you don't mind, just re-ask the question or something like that because sometimes the chat moves way faster than I can keep track of it all right so we've got that taken care of. let's go back to our regularly scheduled indigo over here you must have dark to show light more dark more dark in the form of mm, Terra Rosa a little bit of our yellow ochre and then we'll mix it with our Van Dyke Brown like this doesn't look like it's making any difference here whatsoever however when lighter colors hit it uh, then it will make a difference it will make a difference we got that pretty well settled now how much purple do we want in that outfit uh, Grimgard missed me saying hi oh Grimgard sorry about that so how are you doing I hope that uh, I hope that you can hang around for a while tonight. I think you, you got to see the previews of some of the things that we're working on. We'll certainly be working on our faux Mike Disney here. Now, you, there's one, two, there's three light sources on this. This doesn't even compare to the most recent thing I had to paint that had 
Oh, way more light sources than that. <laughs> there was a few light sources on this, and they were there was light sources that had light sources. So this is that creature caster, King of Malefica. Yeah, King of Malefica. The light sort, but the teeth had teeth, the eyes had eyes, and the light sources had light sources. Uh, let's see, Grunathio, for me, putting the colors thinner in bottles made all the difference before I mixed the colors with thinner on the palette, and the brush was too wet. That is that is definitely it. Uh, let me see. Yeah, all the teeth. Absolutely all the teeth. Now let's see how much of the blue we were going to want to get into our... We're going we're gonna to keep popping back to our, our one little reference over here. So you can see we got, and that was all done with Reaper Clear and liner paints, by the way. Lots of blue liner, lots of the clear purple, that sort of thing. But we're going to be using a lot of cerulean blue, indigo, and our, of course, our favorite Egyptian violet. Oh, Angry Ham, the, there was just one part of one wing that had 60 teeth on it. That was a part of one wing. After that, I just said, there is no point. There's no point in counting anymore. <laughs> Literally, no point in counting. So here's some of our cerulean blue. We're going to mix a little bit of that. Well, we're, we've been calling it the faded ultramarine of oils, but again, working with our craft brushes here. And you can see how little paint there is. This is the key with the oils. Less, 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 not more. We want less. And we're going to just spout that mantra over and over and over again. <laughs> Kit says, light sourceception. That thing was... When, yeah, now, of course, that's not the most complicated thing that I ever had to do with light sources. I had to do a figure once that had 17 individual light sources that's not kidding that's that's for reals yeah something that had 17 different light sources on it let me see uh pre-thinning really helps start then thinning a bit more by smushing it into the brush on the palette that really is it uh yeah teeth yeah but i'm looking for the eyes well, just ask Thunderdome Drew about eyes. He was trying to paint different types of eyes on the eyes. And that might have driven him even more nuts than me just painting eyes. All right, so now we've got a little tint of blue on that armor. Uh, Timunk, I tell you, you uh, survived the school run unscathed and uninfected. Uh, Tigrini says that the, there was still color in the brush, which made the colors muddy. And now this is the thing here. You can see we're just gonna give that a little wipe. There was no no cleaner or anything like that involved. Oh well, uh, let's see. Oh, Mo's Magic is gonna be mixing. He's gonna be mixing and thinning while he's watching. All right, here's a little bit of our off-white of this. Maybe a little bit of our blue. And again, we're just gonna scrape as much of that away as we can. And let's start getting into our purple here. Let's make sure we got less on that brush. So oh, thank you so much, High Gunner, for the subscription. We're gonna get you a little bit of a of a spell brush dance. Well, Pelia spell brush right here. That's who he is. He's basically my face cam because uh, that's me. That is me. Uh, ain't nobody got time for 17 light sources. Now here again, we can look at see how the the purple's getting mixed into the brush there. We can use that. We can use it. Look at how we're just by default. It's not a dry brush, right? Look at how it's mixing here. But look at how there's practically no paint on the brush here. But you bring it over here, all of a sudden, poof! Look at all the color mixing that's happening here. It sure as heck doesn't take long, does it? Now look at look at how that has completely changed. It went from having, I'm sure on screen, almost no value to having plenty of value. 
Uh, Christy Lids uh, took 30 minutes to get out of the school, though. Ah, so fluent. That uh, that doesn't sound like it was a very fun day. Hopefully, this is a little bit more fun than dealing with picking up kids from the school. Yeah, we never really. That wasn't an issue here. The school was. Well, kindergarten was half a block from our house, and the school was a block and a half from the house. So for eight years, I just walked a block and a half, and there was the school. Uh, let's see. I need to continue remember to go back for more paint more often than acrylics. Yeah, uh, Dr. Feedgood, that, uh, that notion that you just get a couple of brush strokes, right, before all of a sudden you just have picked up so much of the other paint colors. Now, this is that, that whole idea. we got to, we've been working this, let's just give that a rest. Let's move somewhere else. Let's move somewhere else. Let's take a little bit of our, oh, shall we say, yellow ochre and some of this here yellow. One thing is, you know, we're just kind of scrubbing that out of the brush. You can even do something like a, a paper towel here. You can wipe some more on the paper towel if you really wanted to. And see how we're holding the brush nice and gentle here. No death grip on the ferrule because you you can't you can't do that with the that kind of death grip. You have a nice easy touch on the brush, fingers away from the ferrule. And it's the exact same kind of brush stroke that we were using on the figure. See how we're starting to pick up some of that brown color? Uh, let's see, dry brushing with oils is the best kind of dry brush. No chalky texture and instant blending. That's almost kind of like one of those. It's almost like one of those advertisements where you know it says uh, it doesn't leave behind any funky odors and it cleans miraculously. Let's see. PKMTM. I'm just going to say out the letters. You can you can inform me on how I should pronounce that. That is no problem at all. But thank you so much for the follow. I'm sure there's a really super clever pronunciation there. And as soon as you tell me, I'll go, oh, I should have seen that. Should have seen it right away. But, yeah, look, oh, it's picking up all the stuff. Well, I, see, I turned it over to the other side, and then it kind of picked up that stuff. But this is the fun thing about... You, you get the, the benefit, sort of, of the dry brush, but you don't get that... Like Al Capone was saying, you don't get that nasty dry brush telltale texture where everybody in the universe goes, Aha! I smell the blood of a dry brush stroke. Uh, let's see, with those sort of delays, she's going to come to doom. Is there a Kathy in the house? There is. Uh, let's see, and I'm it's sometimes... Even when you use the other side, some can still be creeping out onto the other the other edge. So a lot of times I just don't end up using the other side. Now part of that is just it goes back to the days of 2D art. Really, it goes back a long ways. So some of the things you see me doing here with the with the miniature painting has been in development for a very long time going long 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 ago before art before art school heck before high school Hello, little hobbit. Spark my gun. thank you so much Andy Danny for the follow uh, let me see yeah you're closer to the truth than to the truth than you realize uh, let me see I feel like I need to tell you all like a battle cry uh, can do that during October. Yeah, we're going to have to make, because uh, Kathy does not have enough projects. She said she does not have enough projects for October. She said that in the chat yesterday, so we have to find more projects for her. She said that. She said you guys get to choose all the projects that she does in October. Because that's what she said. That may be a bit of a fib, but I'm saying that's what she said. So here's a little bit of our indigo here. Oh, why don't we do some marble? Where is our... Here he is. So here's one. And you can watch this on the YouTube channel right here. We did the marble like so with the oils. Man, was it fun. It was absolutely fun. 
I'll just start putting down some some marble here. And you can see we're just taking the brush here. Look at this. We just sort of take the brush and spin it around. Take that brush, spin it around. We want this going in different directions. There's another piece over here. Now we're talking about blending brushes. Here's here's a little bit of a blending brush. Let's move this in. Now which end of this do we want to be our sharp end? This end with this end. Oh, let's let's soften out this end here. So you can see we kind of scumble this, we stipple this. And see how we end up with a nice soft edge over there. We can, if it's too dark, we push a little bit more of our indigo this way. We can soften up that line. I mean, marble is easy enough to do in acrylics and oils. Ha ha ha. Easy gets criminally easy. Uh, it's just so dark. Look at this. Now we do have to get some of that paint out of there. And I think this shows you why sometimes we have multiple blending brushes because, well, it picks up some color. Wow, this is really looking very uh, nighttimey right here. I think we're going to go after this side and we're going to. Yeah, look at this. Look at these lovely pieces of marble here. Where's our... Where's some more of our lighter tones here? Got a little bit of this mixed with our off-white yellow. And we'll switch this so you can see it. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> <laughs> Angry Ham says, I remember even after just five hours of sleep. I, I think there was a facetious remark about how you don't have any projects for October. And we just said, well, then we can give you more. So we're just kind of, we're picking up one side of our marble there. Now we can turn this brush into a blending brush. Let's see, Flownitz Monk has an orc bus waiting for some oils, some inspiration during Orctober. Would be great. And then we can just pick away at that. All of a sudden we're getting ourselves some nice little resolution. Let's do even more with our smaller lines. And now we're going to mix a little bit more of our thinner with that to make it a little bit wetter. Want to get a nice easy brush stroke here. We don't want that to be overpowering. We just want it to we want it to be there. A little more of our marble lines this way we got and we only do a couple of those before we gotta go back here and get some more. Uh, of course, marble is trivial in oils, Primal Ace. You got it. I figured it would be. I hadn't actually had a chance to do the marble in oils yet. And then I did some, and I went, oh, yeah. Well, it it, it was, you knew it had to be very straightforward and easy, but it was shocking just how easy it was. Really extra shocking. Oh, yeah, the, so the Wapelia Spellbrush figure, that is an Artisan Guild figure. And I do believe the links were posted to it, uh, as is on the YouTube channel. We, we painted it here on the Twitch channel, but that was before I realized you could essentially use highlights to save everything as a VOD, like your entire broadcast could be saved. I did not realize that until a few weeks ago. I just wish I had known sooner. And we'll make that our sort of our most intense marble piece here. Oh hey, hey oh hey Gary, how are you doing? Ah, for all the way, all the way from New York State. 
So how are you doing? I, I've seen, I saw the pictures of the deer. Was that last week with the deer? I know I saw plenty of pictures of the the water, shall we, what do we call it, the water management product project there. Oh, Dr. Feegood did a Gorka Morka war ban. Yeah, so Gary, once your uh, once this virtual Reapercon ends, be prepared for Pelagrial and the waterfall to be heading your way. And I do believe that the the drive is entirely full. It's like I can barely put anything more on it. It's like entirely full, so you should have plenty of entertainment on that drive. So there we go. So we've got ourselves some nice little look at that nice little marble. How long did that take? Didn't take very long. Uh, let's see. Uh, doing great. Yeah, we are country folk now. Oh, and Hugh Hefner. Uh, and knowing is half the battle. Now, uh, what was it that the speed freaks or something like that? The last year, or October was a little bit disappointing. They didn't really do much of anything except they had those buggies come out. I mean, I guess uh, we. It would be interesting to get a couple of those buggies and just do some sort of really interesting, instead of doing them as maybe miniatures, do them almost as a, like a diorama terrain piece or something. More like somebody would take a model kit and do a car diorama from that. That might be interesting, doing something like that. So the marble's in place. Maybe we're going to start to get some more lights on our lights. Uh, let me see. I can't wait. Can't wait to start painting again. There's going to be, yeah, there's going to be an awful lot of, oh my god, it's it's scary. When all of a sudden, like, that, that drive started getting slower and slower and slower, and I went, what's going on? And then I looked at how full it was, and I went, oh, well, that explains it. <laughs> that is why. Now, this is a cadmium orange now mixed with some straight up. Well, faux cadmium, yellow deep. We're starting to intensify our lighting here, but again, see how we're picking up some of that that oil paint right there. So we we wipe out our brush, we clean that out. The interesting thing, and for folks that are are new to the oils. The colors that are going to cover the most will be actually the lightest colors. The colors that cover the least are going to be your darkest, most intense colors. It's kind of the nature of the beast. If you expect that, and, and you just you work with it knowing that that's how it's going to be, and sometimes by less paint it means the paint has been thinned down with some thinner, Sometimes it means I'm practically using a dry brush. And you'll see that when we get to some of the other ones. But we're just we're just getting started here. We are literally just starting out. Cause I think it's only what, seven o'clock? Yeah, it's not even seven o'clock yet. Uh, I need to check that out. I will learn about this thinning method. Now on the I do have several videos on the Patreon page that just show the thinning process, how to mix those up and put them into the jars. It's not so much how to do that. It's really more of a conversation about the colors. So if people have been seeing these, these are some, as I, after I thin the paints, put them in the jars, then we just experimented with them like this to see how they mix with white, what they're like by themselves. Are they opaque or translucent? And I will be making a bunch more of those for the Patreon page. Now we're going to get some more lights on our metals over here, but we we can't rival the objects or otherwise otherwise we get object source shading. We don't want object source shading. We want object source lighting. And if we're going to have that, it means we got to keep our darks intact. And remember, this paint is going to stay wet all the while we're working on it. Use that to your benefit. 
not necessarily by painting one layer after another layer after another but just saying you know what the heck with it I'm just gonna put some some color here we're gonna take the paint out of the brush and you can see this one brush stroke here watch what's gonna happen look at that look at how that brush stroke just gets buffed right in you don't even see the brush stroke anymore that's where we're skipping layers that's where the efficiency of the oils come in. Now we're going to add some more of our yellows here. I uh, hate to raid and run, but late here. But thanks again, Studio J7. It is appreciated. And hope you have a good a good night's rest. I know the, the late night streams can, well, they can be pretty long. Now let's get a little touch of our... Again, we're going to have some lighter colors here on our golds, but not quite so, not quite as reddish as what's going on down here with our flames. We don't want to mistake the highlighting on the gold for more firelight. we got some on this side to do. And now we're going to move away from that. We're going to use our off-white yellow here. If we're, if we're going to want some additional little edge highlights on this. We want to keep that relatively dark. Again, we're going back to our yellow ochre here. Just It's a slightly different intensity of yellow. It's a slightly different shade of yellow. Because again, we want our firelight over here. We want that to do the talking. We'll just use this as a little bit of a blending brush. See, we can. See, we took that, smooth all that out. Now it's just one nice long stroke. And I'll always tell you, I'll say, look, I'm thinning this down in more of a liquid fashion. I'm thinning it down just by, so this, if I just want to thin it down and keep it dry, I'll just be doing this on the palette. But if I kind of go somewhere and bring some liquid in there, that is me thinning it down, I guess, in a more traditional way. But as we demonstrated early on, it does not take much of your opaque to cover so your lighter colors and oils, those are going to cover far more efficiently than the, the colors that you would normally think of. Blues, greens. Those colors and oils, they are not going to cover the same whatsoever. It's your lighter colors. So think of these are your opaques. And for the most part, these are transparent. It's kind of the oppo of what you would think with acrylic paints. It's just it's the nature of the oils. That is why the the pigmentation is so strong. Now again, we're going to grab ourselves something else to use as a blending brush here. But if we're going to do that, it has to be as dry as possible. If we've got a a brush that just came out of some kind of uh, thinner or whatever. All it's going to do is wipe the paint away. So we see we got that line there. Well, look what's going to happen. See how that line goes away? Line goes away. We got some stuff blended together. Now we want to give that a little bit different, a little different color there. We want that to be more of an intense blue because we want that to accentuate. We want to accentuate that orange there, and we're going to do that. A little bit of thalo blue. And we'll get some of that. Now we're just kind of mixing it this way. So, by virtue of that blue, it's not just a difference in darker light. Here, let's do some of our, let's do a little bit of film noir. And that's it. You'll probably be seeing this over the course of the evening. This is where we take away the color. And now we're just going to look at value contrast. So you can see, look at the marble there. You can see those light sources sitting on the marble, but now you no longer see the orange. Let's look at her now. You don't see the orange versus the purple. You see lighting that is most definitely lit. You see the sword has its 
regular light source. You also, so look at here on the other side of the blade. You don't see the orange on one side, the blue on the other. That's why there is just there is more than one type of color of, of contrast. There's color contrast, value contrast, saturation contrast, and trying to keep all those in my as you're working, not a bad idea. Here we're gonna get some of our thalo blue mixed with some of our white here. Yeah, a little bit more of that thalo blue. Thalo blue is another super intense color that is massively transparent until you mix anything that's lighter and opaque in it and then it transforms into something entirely different like <laughs> massively different you can't imagine how much different it is the thalo green is the same way it's very much the same idea now let's get some a couple of lighter tones in her skin here if we can right up here by her eyes let's give her a chin and a mouth why don't we and I'm thinking maybe the firelight's just not gonna reach her face I don't think it would I don't think that would we also have some armor on this side that does need some highlights that are not firelight Uh, let me see. Have a good night. Oh, we have the Baron in the house. How are you doing? Yeah, Vlager Dragon. Now, I, I were you here in the stream where I, I... I'm sure you've seen me show that one wizard where it was mostly filmed, literally in film noir. Now, I'll show you that in just a bit here after I get some of these highlights done here. It was it was one of my Dark Sword tutorials, again, for the Patreon page. And for the first about 45 minutes, I filmed the entire thing with the color turned off. Now, the palette's still in color here, and I told people what I was using. I said, okay, well, now we just grabbed a little bit of phthalo blue. Now we've just mixed it with this. Okay, now we're going into this tan color over here. And I told every everybody what color I was using but they didn't see what it looked like as far as the color goes until it was almost 65% painted and then they saw and it made a colossal difference now here back to some of that thalo blue and you're gonna see the difference that, like right here look at the difference that's gonna make that's some of your thalo blue a touch of white so we got this fiery orange, and now we got that lighter blue on the other side. Now, let's see. What I like to see is painting a mini in film noir where you don't even know the colors you are using. Someone just hands you a palette of paint, and you only see value. And then you take off whatever visor you must be wearing. Uh, you talked about bust last night. I know there's some new idea. Uh, do you mean uh, sculpting a bust? I'm, I'm assuming that's what you mean, sculpting those busts. Uh, that really will depend on, well, basically finances, because many times what I have to paint on the streams or on my Patreon videos even are commission pieces. So they're basically, they have to be able to do multi-functions. And I'm hoping maybe by the end of year next this year or next year depending well it sort of depends on what happens with twitch even and how that develops maybe i can just start doing those sculpting streams so I'm, if i'm actually i'm hoping that's what you were talking about because well you know me how much i would love to be sculpting busts uh, they wouldn't necessarily all be that one eighth scale maybe some would be a one tenth scale i don't know what 72 mil would be is 72 mil one tenth scale? Ah, man, that seems a little bit big for 72 mil. Maybe 72 mil is like one twelfth scale or something. If someone has a ratio, feel free to let me know. Oh, 
Oh, no, I don't have... Uh, I, I do have some other busts here that I will be painting, but I don't have my... The ones that I want to sculpt, obviously I have not had a chance to do those yet. Those are the ones that I'm really jonesing to do. I mean, as much as I like other people's sculpted busts and everything, I want to definitely be able to do my own. Uh, Hugh says that Google say one tenth. I do have some more black heart busts. Actually, I have another one of the. Oh, let's see if I've. I don't think I have it on four. I think my picture got lost from that that particular bust. I do have another one of these folks. So this is the Karakalila bust. This is the one half size bust. This was where we really first. Started. This is where we first used cerulean blue. Uh, Quinacrino magenta and those uh, fluorescent colors. So I have another one of these. Now you can watch, I think, the second half of this on the YouTube channel. But I have another one of these busts. So I will be doing videos on those. Uh, actually, yeah, this was one that, that was done all with acrylics, though. Actually, you can watch this one on YouTube. So I do have more Blackheart busts. I have another one of these Rain of Fire busts. So I still have some more of those. Oh, and for folks that uh, want to see mass amounts of object source lighting and non-metallic metal together, this is going to make Bethany crazy, but there it is. So those are my sisters of battle. And you can see we did the same kind of basing. Look at that. Sculpey, marble, paint the marble, put the flamey skulls on there, do the gold armor, the freehand on the cloaks, all that stuff done with the oils and I do believe this lady is up on YouTube right now so plenty of possibilities with the oils uh, I saw that there was a Medusa bust up now over uh, at Blackheart now is that the uh, uh -huh, Bethany's looking away just for say I say I tried to warn you I tried to warn you is that one of their half size or is that one of their one eighth size. What do they call them again? Micro, micro busts. Wow, what do they call those things? The the micro minis or something like that. They're one eighth size busts. We're gonna get ourselves some extra lighting along the top surface of that sword blade. She's actually ah, she's wearing a glove. I just see that now. She's wearing a glow. Okay, so that's good to know. Not that it would actually really change much of what I was doing. We're going to get some darker stuff going on her face. And we're actually going to take some of this. Now, it's Egyptian violet. It's got the same pigments in it as diazonine purple or dioxinine purple. It's. I think it's one of those things where... A few companies have their own different version of it. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much. Uh, Shifty Five or Shifty Five. For the follow, that is appreciated. So instead of necessarily always using indigo as that darker color, I can use a little bit of this violet here. I could also use the brown matter. Always want to call it brown matter alizarin, just from the old watercolor days. And I will show some of the old 2D art in a bit. However, I'm just looking to... Oh, we need to get some dark over here. You know what? Speaking of our brown matter, why not just uh, use some of that? Let's get ourselves a nice little dark line here, or a bit of shadow right there. big difference that makes oh maybe we need to darken the eyes of this skull right here and this guy too since uh, well he's not on fire other one might be so what are we gonna do up in there I believe I'm gonna take some of our that's a thalo blue. Actually, mix a little bit of purple there, of all things. I'm gonna get ourselves some little bit of reflected light 
into this part of the armor. Not even sure if you can see that. Maybe you can. And now we're going to let some of that mix here. It's subtle. It doesn't always have to beat you over the head. These, maybe we make them more of a... Ah, let's go more of a crimson. Yes. If a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. Let's get some warm color up here without it necessarily having to be fiery warm. So we're just going to get this crimson into these beads here, and then we will work some lighter colors into that. That's... I knew there was a little something missing up there. Speaking of which, we've done a lot of lightening of things. We're going to start to go back the other way, and this is where we're going to use some of those darker, more translucent tones in our favor. We're going to almost use them like they're glazes, kind of on the drier side for a glaze, but see what that does on the knee right there? You can go lighter and lighter, but sometimes you got to go the other way. That's the only way you're going to show light, is to get some dark. Just like we're doing over there. Now this, my finger's just going to keep hitting that. So I, until we reach kind of a phase where we know we're not going to be touching that anymore, we'll just leave that. You can even get some darker stuff on these skulls here. And you can see how... Look at how our firelight on the skull gets that much lighter. Now we're going to do the same thing. Look at, look at what's happening here on this skull. So instead of necessarily adding more and more and more light, we darken some areas. Well, that's going to have an impact too. Uh, let me see. Hey, Janowski, how are you doing? Uh, so it's a one-half scale... G I thought it was the one-half scale Gorgon bust. Uh, Jano, there's very few of these. They may continue, but they typically start at around 6 o'clock or so, central time. And now they do continue for hours. They will continue into the late evening times. But... The la of the if you check out the last oh gosh, couple of dozen streams they either are taking place during the day Central Time. Now of course you you can be an entirely different uh, time zone so that's gonna be different. I also there are other let's just put it this way there's other things besides Twitch that have to be done and those take precedence and. I have to work around a filming schedule and a shipping schedule and a painting schedule. So unfortunately, the, the best that I can promise is that I do these on Monday nights, Friday nights, and during the day and into the evening on Saturday. There will never really be an exact time. Oh, hey, Biggs. How are you doing? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Samurai Jack Bai is around for Fort Wapple. Hey, Jack, how are you doing? Oh, let's see. Angry Ham has to head off to sleep. Uh, might name the Tomb Kings and Necrons to the Purple Purples. Or Purple Nurples. <laughs> so, yeah, most of the stream, they tend to take place at those times. And just because the it was it's far... We just after doing this for a while on the Twitch thing, those late nights, those are really needed for filming and for uploading. And those are the things that I have to place as the priority, which is why sometimes I really want to do a Twitch stream, but the video either has to be filmed or uploaded. And that will take precedence. I'm just getting a couple of gold things out here. Nothing, nothing terribly 
fancy about that. We're going to get a little bit of our off-white yellow. Uh, let's see, Biggs just got done playing a round of disc golf. Aha, uh -huh, didn't manage to lose. Ah, uh, so, uh, so da how many, uh, how many classes did you do today? Hopefully only two, maybe three, not four or five. Uh, let's see, Jano says, in any case, uh, that's, <laughs> oh, no problem, Jano. Yeah, I know there's a, a lot of Twitch streamers, they say, this is, this is my time, you know, and they, uh, they really stick to that schedule. And there, it may come a time. It it all depends. Now, <laughs> this year we didn't have to worry about. Well, we do sort of have to worry about conventions, as in digital conventions, like well this one. So that can that who knows what uh, effect that will have moving forward. Oh, let's see. Oh, hey, Gary, let's see, Gary, uh, you have to be the hardest working guy in the painting world. Well, thank you so much, Gary. That is appreciated. Uh, only two, I can really do three a day, plus I had to work half the day. Uh, Shifty5 asks if it is a wet palette. It is not a wet palette. I will show you the things about, now part of it is exactly the same material that I use for my wet palette. But with the oils, there is definitely no... No need for the wet palette. Here, let's grab our stuff. So the parchment paper that you see, this is the same stuff I would use on my wet palette. But underneath it is actually just a piece of cardboard. And I will take this glue stick, like, right here. And I'll just glue it to the cardboard so that when I'm done, I can just peel that right off there. Now you'll see I've got a couple of palettes here. Like, this is the palette we used the first two days get over here so this is the palette from the first couple days you can see there's still actually there's still some paint down there that is usable but I did just uh, I got rid of it because it's it would have been a little bit confusing for new people to see that yep shifty it's oil paint it's uh, as <laughs> Nessie said it's like magic uh, let's see So yeah, Jano, it's uh, I knew actually, but this is much more of a regular schedule than when it first started, where I just had no idea when I would be able to do it. it it's sort of crystallized, or what, what's the, I think crystallized or whatever, into well, well, Kathy does her Monday night D and D, well, I do the streaming. Uh, Friday night, well, Kathy is going to be watching Pyro Club. That's when I do this. And then Saturday is the Saturday extravaganza. That's where I do, well, charismatic megafauna. Like this. <clears throat> let's grab our... Let's grab this guy and let's make our camera back out a little bit. So this is a typical thing that we do on a Saturday. Just like we did the big old creature caster demon last Saturday. This is a typical thing that we do on a Saturday and it starts somewhere between 3 and 4 central which I know for you that's like 11 o'clock at night something like that and it probably starts when you're going to bed and it's uh, probably still going by the time you get up in the morning. Here, let's get closer here a little bit. Uh, just learning about painting minis. Well uh Shifty Five, I I do believe. If you're not familiar with the YouTube channel, you can head on over there. It's just James Wapple on YouTube. I've got a a whole ton of tutorial videos there, and now you can watch tons of the. I guess you, I don't know if I could. They're, they're highlights. Don't really want to call them vods because they're not actually vods. But since your highlight can be the entire episode. Well, you can watch the whole thing right here on Twitch. Like that big old Chimera, you can watch that. You can watch the Creature Caster episodes. You can watch all that stuff. 
how much lighter do I want to get over here? <laughs> of a, as a player of Fire Sorcerer, I approve Fire Fridays. Uh, let me see. Pyro Club, aka Diz, must burn Fridays. Uh, it looks like, uh, well, Zaratoris probably has to be going pretty soon. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. It's only, it's not even 7 o'clock here yet. So say we all. So say we all. Thank you so much for the sub. Oh, Bilbo. Ah, uh, is Bilbo, is he doing the gifting of subs again? Is he being, is he being Trixie? Is he being a Trixie hobbit? And she's like, get out of here. He's like, you can't, oh, oh well. He's always getting chased away by something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I, I do believe, Nessie, there's an official count going on again of just how many hours there really are of the tutorial videos. We're trying to see if 500 hours is an undercounting. And somehow I have a feeling that it is. All right, so we put our darker reds up here. Let's see if we can't get some lighter reds. And I don't want it to be a warmer red. I want it to be a cooler red. So I'm going to take a little bit of our titanium white over here. And this is essentially a lizard crimson here. Now when you do this, it is going to... It's going to take away a little bit of the intensity, but you can see it becomes more opaque now. Now we've got ourselves some opacity. Let's see what we can do here. Making these a little bit lighter. Maybe we do a little bit of freehand on the... Ah, maybe we'll do a little bit of... Just a wee touch of freehand on that veil. It could be interesting. Hey, Bilbo's brush. So hopefully you had a good night last night. And thanks for joining me again. And, well, thanks for the subs, too. Oh, Shivdi, yeah, that is... Uh, I couldn't resist that one. I think there was uh, there was a couple of sounds that I just couldn't find. I think there was one that I wanted. I don't know if it was a it was either a Gandalf sound. Oh, fly you fools! That's that's the one I was looking for, and I just couldn't find it. Well, I think I might have found one, but it had too much other junk going on at the same time. Yeah, it wasn't quite the right sound bite. So we're going to get, actually, I'm kind of liking this uh, sort of pinkish color here. We're going to get this in some other places. So it's not just that purple. Because that would be kind of boring. So you can see what we're doing here. We're changing some of this. We're giving a little bit of a tint here. That is the beauty of the oils. You can always constantly be changing things, tinting things. I'm going to leave that more towards the blue. However, on this, I might also let that get changed just a touch. See how there's a little bit of the pink working its way into this? But it's not much paint. There's very little paint there. But, um, you're going to hear that over and over again very little paint if you just if you just start piling that stuff in there it's only well it's going to take forever to dry well not forever but it will take longer to dry and you're going to find it that much harder to get more paint on it that is why less is more and more is way too much so let's see what we might be able to do freehand wise here uh, let's see, I'm actually watching it through again. Uh, let's see, uh, Bilbo finished a night haunt with oils in 2 hours 53 minutes, start to finish with breaks. That's what we like, baby. That is what we like. Nope, Paddy Kane has redeemed the Book of Wapple. So what are we talking about? For folks here that aren't really... They haven't seen the Book of Wapple before. It is an ancient tome. Hey, 
as we say hello to spirits gaming spirits one gaming thank you so much for the follow what have we said several times already if a color goes somewhere it must go everywhere that is why we are spreading that pinkish color that crimson color to as many other places as we can what did we start with we started with those beat up craft brushes and then we worked our way into sables into smaller brushes decision that's actually more you can be as precise as you want with your brush strokes but if you can't just decide on a course of action to kind of stay with it that's gonna that's gonna create some issues for you now we gotta go to some of our later chapters here oh look at this ask not what you can do for your oils but what your oils can do for you and you've seen what they do for me right you see the blending that goes on and if we can't emphasize the dry brushing enough with the oils and you'll see it again as we start that Mike Disney figure dry brushing is a big deal it has to do with color unity so if you just have orange in one place here now again back in the 2d painting days that was always referred to as an orphan color and as a viewer you would be really disturbed as to why does that one color appear there because basically color it's the spectrum it's the entire spectrum if you're just taking one part of the spectrum and isolating it somewhere like this bluish light that's on her it has to be everywhere else too how can this bluish light be on her and not everywhere else we have these little areas of warm colors here if we have none of that back here it's almost like we've chopped off this piece and just tacked it on with a whole separate set of lighting and colors now, this little bit of reddishness here helps tie together that so that that's what we mean by a color going everywhere you know there's a little bit of the purple out here also here let's look at our where's our sisters of battle same idea here you can see that the green is in the robe but it's also in the gold it's in our object source lighting so that even there's even a little bit of green here you can see well look we have marble there so from the very top to the bottom of this to the sword blade that green some form of that green carries everywhere now it might be a different green it might be more intense it might be more more lighter darker but there's some form of green there so hopefully that makes sense uh, visualize and attack well thanks for joining us Gary I hope that you have a great evening because it is getting later for you it's got to be 802 for what's well, 802 for Nessie also now we are going to get some some lighter touches here on the armor closer to where our fire is I just had to wait for that to again not dry but sometimes with the oils you just have to wait a few minutes maybe longer like here on the sword but I needed to let that paint just hang out there for a little while I think we've let let it sit there a good hour ish or so it means that that little skinny brush stroke like that that's actually gonna stick there here let's get some of our golds into this because she does have her dual swords going I think we actually need to get some more more light in here so we're gonna be taking some of our fanchion red it is very much a dry this is not watered down or liquefied in any way shape or form I'm just looking at this here going yeah we need to we need to get this a little bit lighter back here it's so darn close to that firelight I didn't see this one fold so we'll go after it again you might even lighten this up too and you don't have to work wet into wet with the oils you can if you're working on multiple figures like that sisters of battle painting series that I've been showing you well that took several days thank you thank you much uh, painter Kiana thank you so much for the follow that thing took place over several days you can bet that those figures they dried and that wasn't the end of the oil blending that was just 
That was just a different stage of the oil blending. Because you can actually still blend new oil paint over dry oil paint. That is not a problem. It's actually really fun to do that. Which, that Sisters of Battle project reminded me of quite efficiently when I went, this is fun. I forgot how much fun it is to just take some oil paint over some dry oil paints and be able to just smear it on, not have to worry about it getting muddy at all because there is nothing else for it to blend with. So, yeah, it's not always just, it's, it doesn't always have to be wet into wet. It is okay for the oil paints to dry. We are going to lighten this up, though. We're going to start to get some lighter things over here. Uh, let's see, Janowski asks, everyone, your opinion to achieve a suitably grim and dark look and something you'd see in 28 theme miniatures. Oh, thanks, the the, the Baron. Uh, Janowski, you can definitely work... You can't work with both at the same time, but you can work one over the other. So, actually, you can watch right here the final phase of this, the fourth phase of this Creature Caster thing, because of the timing, it was painted in acrylics. The first three... I've, I filmed three videos of this. Each one of them was in oils. Then last Saturday on Twitch, we used Reaper Clear and Liners, and we painted over the oil paints. So yes, you can paint acrylics over oils. Uh, here's another one right here. Again, because of timing, the oils dried. It had to go in the mail within hours. So all the skulls and the horns were just finished off with acrylics. So it, it's not a zero-sum game. It's not a. It's an. It's not an either or. It's both. You can definitely use both of them without a problem. Do we have a just Dices in the house? Wow. Uh, folks, be sure, like in, uh, oh my goodness, about 50 some odd minutes, you can catch Dices in the Pyro Club. She'll be doing, uh, I, I, I do believe she's going to keep doing her, her familiar role as the halfling. But also, give Just Dices that follow, because she does lots of fantastic painting. I've been seeing, uh, saw some of more of your chibis and stuff that you were doing. Those were fantastic. So folk, definitely give Dices the follow. It's always a good time. So Shifty5, the oils take somewhere in the neighborhood, and it's, it's always going to depend but they take somewhere in the neighborhood of between 8 to 10 hours to dry. They take less and less time for me to dry because I'm just learning how to use less and less paint. The more, the more you learn to control the oils, the less paint you're going to have on there, and it's just going to take less time to dry. Uh, let me see, Patty can't let my minis dry for about eight hours, then come back and uh, blend it kind of wet into wet. It's very forgiving and easy. Oh yeah, Pixel Cat, the, the humidity, it can make a difference. Because it's gotten less humid here. And things seem to be drying faster. Now, of course, we have a bunch of fans running. So that sort of helps too. Now... This is something I will suggest. Now, we don't have pets here, but if you have pets that shed, like long-haired pets that shed things, you might want to have, maybe just put your uh, oil-painted thing in a cabinet or just somewhere that's pet hair-free <laughs> because that pet hair will find your wet paint. It probably happens with your acrylics, too, you just don't maybe realize it so much. Uh, let's see. You could use either oils or acrylics, both regular. Yeah, that's uh. So here we go. This was painted entirely in oils right here. And you can see we've got plenty of rust and weathering. And we also have something that was painted 
entirely in acrylics, which also has plenty of rust and weathering. We also have something here again that was that was done entirely in acrylics right there. Plenty of rust and weathering. It's just, it's pretty much what you want it to be. And obviously this has a very much of a darker look to it as well. Uh -huh. Samurai Jack says acrylic equals cat hair magnet. So say we're starting to pick up some more uh, pixel cat. I think you were asking about the rocks. Say we're starting to get more of the glow on those rocks here. It was basically something that we just had to kind of work our way around to. Let's see how that's uh, now it's really starting. Nice little trail of lighter colors here. Do we have a Drew in the house? Yes, we do. Boy, getting dog hairs in the mouse. Uh, Drew, uh, so folks, give Drew the follow. Because on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you'll see him usually working on some kind of a big beastie or a big bust. Uh, lately, he has been working on the King of Malefica. Uh, so, Drew, uh, weren't you saying about next week that will be your next couple of sessions there? You'll be finishing off the King? Uh, let's see. Well, it hit those two. I was wondering about Moonlight on the Rocks. Back here for sure. Back here for sure. We're just getting our... Like here, I can see I'm kind of deficient on some of the lighter oranges. So it will be less deficient on those now. We'll make that lighter. Maybe a little lighter. And you can see what's happening here. We're just letting those mix together. Instead of just kind of gradually stair-stepping up, we're, we're accelerating that process a little bit. Now i got to figure out as much as I would love to have I'm gonna just I'm gonna cheat here a little bit. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of orange onto her her shoes there. I mean like the tiniest little amount here. Mostly because I want it to contrast with the marble. Oh, and we can actually get some more marble color in here too. So as we boy, and that's uh yeah, let's shift over to some more marble color here. Let's do that. All we need to do is get this lighter color right here. Because we can't have, like, no marble going on over here. Just get a little bit more right here. Fade some of that out. Let's go just a tad bit lighter with this. I know her sword is kind of blocking this a little bit, but I kind of just need to work right in here. And I need to sort of hold it this way. So just bear with me. Now, see, we've got our marble continued there, even a little bit through that glow. We're going to do the same over here, too. So see how that continues through the glow just a bit. Hey, we got trash in the house. And we have Trashorama. So how are you doing, Trashorama? Uh, now, let's see. Uh, Trash, did you see some of the stuff that we worked on last night? So, well, some more object source lighting. This was last night. Well, and uh, some freehand there. And everyone is really jazzed about the 2018 Reaper Sophie that we did. We were doing some freehand on her. You can see we got some really fun stuff going on with the wings. So those were painted entirely in oils. We also did this guy, or this lady right here. Just trying to do a quick little thing on how you can do some of those, those non-metallic metal blade effects. Uh, t tonight, one of the things we're going to be doing is uh, the alter ego of Mike Disney with the bum knee. The beard and a Detroit Tigers hat. So yeah, we'll be doing him too. All right. So we just we got our marble here. Right, we've got some good marble stuff going on. 
Now we were talking about getting some, maybe some moonlight colors back here. Let's see if we can do that now. We got some cerulean blue. We got some of this blue gray here. Little touch of that yellow because we don't want it to necessarily be too much of a bluish color. And we'll just uh, see how we can put a little touch of that here into our rocks. And just a little bit, not a ton. We don't want to overdo it with that. We just want a suggestion of it. We got plenty of light going on with the firelight. That's going to be a whole lot stronger than any moonlight. Just, uh, that's going to be almost enough right there. We'll do a little bit more on this side. I think we're also going to put some, some more of a darker glaze in that area too. A wee bit more over here. Now so we have Aussie AC in the house. Uh, let's see. That was the plan. About 80% on the bulk details. Now we're starting to pull everything together. <laughs> so that that we were just uh, saying how doing all those teeth your thirsty thursday is going to be a real thirsty thursday with all those teeth and if you do those teeth on tuesday it's going to be a thirsty tuesday as well any day you do that many teeth it's going to be a thirsty day Yep, that is a. Uh, I can't believe that's only taken two hours. Yeah, it's uh, about two hours. Yeah, maybe because we were working on those other guys. So about two hours or so. That's about it. That includes your marble. That includes your object source lighting. We were thinking of maybe fooling around with a wee spot of freehand up here. Just something simple. Nothing crazy. Do we do that maybe darker instead of lighter? If we don't like it, we just wipe it away. That's that's the other sweet thing about the oils. If we don't like it, it just goes away. Now what kind of freehand might we want to do here? Let's see if it's gonna follow this. Yeah, do we have any we oh we have Fleur de Lis. Let's just use some Fleur de Lis iconography, maybe. So we'll just, uh, I mean, heck, we still got Sisters of Battle on the brain. So why don't we just put ourselves a wee bit of a Fleur de Lis right here. And then we can play off of that. And we don't want it to be punch you in the face obvious we want it to just be a suggestion and maybe we'll just have some of our almost like some kind of viney things emerge from that some kind of thing with the well as Nessie might say some kind of Baratheon type vines here maybe no that's gonna be too much Maybe even a little bit of a swirl right at the end of that. Something that's viney right here. And something that's just minimal. Like you can barely even notice it until you look at it and then you see some kind of... You say, well, maybe there's a design on there. It doesn't always have to... It doesn't have to be freehand that just says, look at me, I'm freehand. Sometimes that can be irritating on miniatures. And I'm looking at you, some of those standard bears where the guy is six feet tall and he's got a banner that's the size of a billboard that might weigh about 400 pounds in a stiff breeze because that banner is just, it's conveniently straight enough so that you can see every last little brushstroke that's on there. That must be one strong ombre carrying around that banner.
And that, I mean, I understand because painting banners that have any kind of folds in them, that is not easy. And the more folds there are in your banner, well, the less that super fancy stuff is going to translate. It's a pain trying to wrap that stuff around a banner when it's actually in motion. Now, Creature Caster is taking a ton of photos and posting them of the king. Ah, I, I think I just saw... Did they post something to Instagram like today or last night or whatever? I think I might have seen some this morning. I'm going to have to... Geez, that well, thanks for reminding me, because I'm going to have to tell them, hey, could you maybe send me some of those once in a while? Because I think I had all of about 45 minutes to take pictures of that stupid thing before I had to just shove it in a box and send it away. Actually, I don't even think I had 45 minutes. I think I have more like 15 minutes. Oh, she does have a little bit of a crown type of thing going on here. Maybe we'll get some more lights in that as well. We are going to get some more darks on this side, though. So this is indigo right here. So it's a little bit of a cooler blue. Uh, let's see, they just posted a dual shot of your king versus the queen of onslaught. Ah. Uh, now we're going to do ourselves more dorks on this side and right down here I don't know if you can see it I'm gonna say some there's still a bit of red that's gonna sneak in there we're, we're just gonna use the fanchion red we're not even gonna use our cadmium red orange this is almost like a cadmium red deep right here just minus the heavy metals so this is sometimes one of those colors you just sort of discover by accident and it turns out to have some really good properties. Now, what's going to happen with this side here? I think this even needs... I don't even know if you can see what's going on right here. You may not even be able to see it. But it's this side. It's facing towards where the flames are. So we got to do something here. We have plenty of darks there. So even a mid-tone, that'll be enough of a light. Boy, I might even have to just pump that a little bit more. would prefer not to, but we kind of have to. We can't have that red over there and not have at least some kind of reddish light affecting that, because it's metal. It's amazing what metal will reflect and what other stuff does not get reflected. We'll do some more of our lights here. Maybe, yes, on, on this side here. Again, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a whole bunch of little tiny things in our armor. We're just trying to pick up some lights on those. And we'll get, yeah, just a couple more here. Get it this way. No, actually, I gotta go the other way. We will go the other direction then, which we can do. We've got our lighter blue here. I just see that really is in some sort of a shadow area there, so we're just gonna go over the top of that. I don't mind having a little bit of that red back here. I am gonna have to thin this down more to get it to stick. Thick will stick over thin and vice versa. What's going to be tricky, again, it's thin can be relative. Is it thinner because I just used less paint, almost like a dry brush? Or is it thinner because I added thinner to it? If I added actual thinner to it, that's a very different consistency. That is something you only just learn by doing it. There is no there's no formula that I can tell you. There's no formula that anybody can tell you. That is just something that only gets learned by doing it. So say we all. So say we all. 
Uh, thank you so much for the resub. Ah, yes, a cat herder has resubbed for three months. Thank you so much. So at least we are getting some sounds for that. Oh, oh let's see. A cat herder always appreciate the instruction and finally made some sculpy bases with GSW rollers. Boy, I'm going to have to, uh, cat herder, you're going to have to send me some pics of those because I got to see. I'm just, it's really neat to see anything that people do with the videos but there's just something about the bases because uh, I mean you can imagine how the, the two of us using that same roller could come up with so many different things or how similar there there might be so that would be really cool I gotta, I gotta see some pictures of that if you can shoot me some on the Instagrams or in a whisper that would be fabulous Oh, let's get ourselves. We need to do a couple of things here. We need to get some darks up there. That's actually going to take the form of a little bit of indigo here. And it is thinned down significantly. Because we got no edge over here. Now we got an edge. Then we'll do a wee bit of blending with this. There was an awful lot of light on that side. I'm going to give me something to drink real quick here. Uh, Pixel Cat, I, I couldn't say anything even partially for sure on that other than think of what you would see in a starter set. Something... Uh, you got to have some of the cad like some of think of this you would obviously have to have a white you'd probably have to have these two i would say those are kind of important i'd really love to have a terra rosa in there but you'd probably have something like a right here your yellow ochre some kind of a cad red deep or something along those lines again i'd love to have an indigo in there but you might have something like a Payne's gray I'd love to have cerulean blue on there, but it's probably going to be more like a thalo blue, ultramarine blue. But I I do think uh, multiples of six was the goal. I can't again I can't say anything for sure because it's all very much in the early stages. We don't even have the prototypes ready for testing just yet for me to test anyways. But think of what you normally see in a starter set. That would, that would be kind of what gets started out with. But you can you can guarantee that there's gonna have to be some indigo and some terra rosa in there because those are just such utilitarian colors. Uh, let me see. Payne's Gray has my... And this indigo took its job. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, somehow... I, and I've, I've always... I love my Payne's Gray. And, and I'll still be using that. It's just that indigo... It, it can do more things than the Payne's Gray could between the consistency of it, between what it can... It's just what it can do. Now you can see we added a little bit more of a dark there to that edge. And look at how that starts to show up more. We will do a similar thing over here, especially right here. Because making this dark, well, it makes that that much lighter. You must have dark to show the light. We'll do some of that over here too. Because that shading means that you have object source lighting and not object source shading. I'm just going to hit some of that over here too. Let's see, I just, uh, we got the firelight here. We make it darker over here. And we're still going to add some dirt and dust and some other things. Obviously we wait till the oils are, well, <laughs> I, I can't always wait for the oils to be dry when I do that, but typically wait for the oils to dry because just like that pet here, you would be amazed at how flock wants to find its way 
onto wet oil paint. It really does. I think we will try a few little things on the face here. I do want to get something that's not just gray blues on the face. I want to give that a little bit of life. So we get a little bit of magenta creep its way in there. And because we've mixed some white with the crimson, it just sort of by default gets to be a little bit on the magenta side. Now we're going to go back in again with some of the lighter colors on her face, but I needed to get some more, some more shadows in there first. Shadows first, then go back in there with some more lights, which we'll do now. And even that's got a little bit of the magenta mixed in with it. I think maybe a touch more cerulean blue. Yeah, a little bit more on the cerulean blue side of things. Let's get her eye on this side of her face. Mm, won't mess with the hair. Let's get the top of her cheek here. And as we brush this in, it starts to mix with a little bit of that magenta that we threw in. You can get her chin now. See her chin gets a little bit lighter. In effect, using this like a blending brush. And we could definitely go we can get some more lights in here. We always try to leave that final bit of rating by Holly Monster. <laughs> well, I think this might be our first Holly Monster raid, and let's welcome in Holly Monster and all of the raiders. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun. Thank you so much for the follow, Walking Harder, and welcome, Raiders. We, I think you might have been warned that we are going to be working with some oils here. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much for the follow, Dirk Pitt. Gandalf appreciates it, too. So we are we are on day three of Reprecon and Hello, Holly Monster. Little hobbits. Spark my ganja. So how was your stream as we welcome in Static Overdrive and Swillow? Hey, Swill. Oh, Hobby Hopper, how are you doing? Uh, let me see. Now, nope, Spider Haven, we will check out Wappleville in just a second as we welcome in our raiders and let them know what the heck is going on here. Because we actually, we have not been to Wappleville in quite a while. So Spider Haven, we will travel to Wappleville very soon. We just want to let people know that we are working with oil paints here. Uh, it was great. I was doing all the, the quad color challenge. Hey, look at this. Jacob Jansen comes in, too. How did we let those guys in here? Thank you so much for the follow, Make Right. I appreciate that. So what we did, we... Not too long ago, what? Two hours ago, two and a half hours ago, she looked out just like this. This was our little pre-glaze that we do with the oils where we splash on usually some darker colors, some umbers, Van Dyke brown, indigo. We wipe those away with a sponge like this. And then we start to work back in with some lighter colors. We did, as you can see, we did our marble here. We've been working in our object source lighting, our, our metallics here, our, our metals, Hello, sorry. Hobbits, spark my gun, Thank you so much for the follow, Butterfly Drag. We're starting to do a little bit of skin tone on her at this point. And now for the folks that are new here, we have been streaming all week. We've been streaming since Monday. So check out some of these are some of the figures that we worked on last night in the stream. These are all Reaper figures here. These were all done in oils. So Monday night, we were streaming basing. That's actually where we based all of these. If you want to see how these were based, check out Monday night stream. Check out uh, 
I think Tuesday we were painting and all. Wednesday we were painting and all. Thursday. Now it's Friday. And we're painting this. So Spider Haven wanted to take a little trip to Wapleville. What are we talking about? Wapleville. What's that? Well, there is kind of a long story there. But it's always best told in pictures like this. So welcome to the town of Wapleville. All of these buildings are MDF terrain, actually burn-in designs, made pretty much all of this stuff. You got the church, the jail, the watchtower, the train station, the cantina. You also have La Flamant Rose. And there's another look. Look, we have our water tower. You see the boardwalks, some wagons. And now you see the lawmen of Wapleville. And they're uh, trying to keep an eye on the graveyard because, ah, stuff just keeps popping out of the graveyard. These are some of the lawmen, and boy, do I wish I had oils for these. This is a time before I was working with the oils. All four of those pieces, would it be faster? Well, it would be faster, but it would just be way more relaxing. And here's some of your, on the left you have Warrior Nation, and on the right you have Dark Nation. Also, those would have been really fun to do with the oils. And here's a couple more figures from that genre. Here we go. And we've got a base much like this one. Where is she? Here we go. So this is the same Sculpey that you see here that's painted it as marble. Well, here we carved in, see that wood grain texture? We carved that into the Sculpey, put a little carpet on there, and oh, look. We've got ourselves a little bit of brocade on there, some freehand. This is the exact same, again, Sculpey, but it's flat, and we, we uh, painted in our little design there. And here we have some tree bark with a snake. So there's your a little trip down, Wapple, uh, trip down memory lane there, taking you to Wapleville. So that's what we mean when we're talking about Wapleville. Now let's get back to... Our lady here. Uh, let me see. Holly Monster, I uh, use tan. Uh, Gia Shade Sticks Purple Tan Skin. Oh, I think I've used the tan skin. I haven't used Peppermint White. That sounds really good. And uh, it, looks, it sounds like it was on some zombies. Now we're going to take some of our crimson. That's going to be more of a glaze. Once again, and we're going to get some darks over in here, too. We need some more darks. If you want to have light, you must have dark. And this is all wet oils right here. Yes, you can. Look at what we're doing here. Look at this. That's right over wet oil paint. Yet we're able to tint that a little bit. We have, oh, look, we have one of our blending brushes here still. See how nice and soft that is? Look at all of this that we've been able to blend out nice and soft. Now here, you see we have some, and you say, oh, you know, you got your, some brush strokes there. Well, a blending brush like this. Now, see that, how it's a little bit choppy right there? You'll see that lose all of that choppiness. Look at how smooth that gets. See now that it looks like it's almost been airbrushed. You could practically count every single brush stroke in there. But now that we took a blending brush to it, all of that wiped away. Look at that. Look how nice and smooth that is. That's what we did with our marble right here. We just we slapped down some colors. We started pushing those around. We were even able to paint see this this lighter marble color right over the wet oils. That is definitely wet oils right there. Now, do we feel like we need to extend this flame out this way a little bit? Maybe we do. And we have another situation where maybe we wouldn't mind doing a little bit of our... But, but look at, see all that dark paint that just got into the that brush there? Means we got to take our, our rag like so. We just got to get some as much of that paint out of there as we can. We are not going to hit it with any of our thinner because that's just going to make it wet. If we make that wet, it's just going to wipe the paint away. See how we got some more brush strokes right here? We want to get rid of those. 
Look at the nice little gentle brush stroke that's going to happen here. A nice gentle brush stroke. Push that paint around. You don't see any brush strokes anymore. All gone. Brush strokes. Feeny. No more. I can see a touch of a brush stroke right there. We'll just wipe that away just like we did on the other surface. It can even work here. Let's say maybe that's not smooth enough. Maybe we want to make it a little bit smoother. We'll just find something to serve as a blending brush here. Watch, look at how much smoother that gets. Doesn't that look like it's just been, it looks smoother than an airbrush. Just minus the the mass, the electricity, the compressor, the air filters, the mask, all that kind of stuff. Nice and easy. No need to mask off an area. You just, you just paint it. I can do the same. I, see I've got some paint sitting on that brush now that we scooped off of somewhere else. I can just put that right down here and do some more blending over there. So you can always take a little brush. If you just don't like something, if you see too much of a brush stroke, you just take your blending brush here and you wipe some of it away. Now here we were fooling around with a little bit of free hand. We're just going to tone some of that down. It is very similar to what we did on this piece right here. So you can see on the, the leg right there, see the, the pattern on the robe? Very much the same instance here. Where we, we put the freehand pattern on and then we just take that blending brush and we smooth out. Look at, see back there how that's much more subdued. Didn't start out that way. It actually started out much brighter. It was more like this. But then we took that blending brush and we just kind of wiped that away. And actually the second episode of this just went up on the, it's going to go up on the YouTube channel because it is uh, still rendering over there, I think. At least I hope it is. Now, we want to get some lighter tones in here, I think. Let's do that. but we've got lots of purples in here. Maybe we'll get something that's more of a blue. To make that stick, it had to be thinned down. As in thinned down, more watery. And now I'm going to take this blue and we're going to expand it out here. A little bit of a scumbling style brush stroke there. Do I want some more lights in? The yes, I'm going to make the veil a little bit lighter here. Just a bit lighter. I'm going to catch this edge. Maybe here too. Yep. Tempted to maybe put some lighter touches onto those gemstones. Might just do that here. Let's take some of our white. I don't know if you, yeah, I think you can see it. Let's see if we can't get some of that reflected light or the light that sort of passes through some of those gemstones there. Now here I'm gonna actually have to get some firelight up there. That's about what we can do with the pinks, I think. Before we go back into some of our orangey red here, that is uh, some of our cadmium red, scarlet or cadmium orange. I think the crown might just need to capture some of that. And uh, No, I'm not going to put any on the Fade. That's just too far back. That should be that would be blocked by something. Uh, let me see. Nessie knows redeem film noir. Okay. He claims the power of film noir. What are we talking about? And I'll show you a couple of things here. 
So you, you know what this was looking like. Now take a look at this. You can see we have our we, that's t complete light. You can see all the light sources being provided here. Look at same down here. Let's look at the back. You got your light sources over here. Now even just take a look at this focus on this area right here on the sword. And just look at the two surfaces when we bring this color back. Look at the differences. See what happens when we bring that color back. We got orange on this side. We have blue on that side. They are identical values. There is no difference. This is barely darker than this. The difference is not only is one orange, but one is very intense. The other is not. Now, just to give you another example, this is pretty dramatic here. Now we're going to just take away the color to start with. Now, this is one of the dark sword figures that I did for my for my Patreon page. Now just take a close look at the hat. Take a close look at this and look at his robe. There's plenty of shading there, right? You got dark in the folds and you got highlights on the folds. It's all the same until we bring back the color. We're going to do that. Now watch what happens when we bring back all that color. What do you see now? You see lots of muted color. You see pinks, you see greens, you see some yellows in here. That cold blue flame, that's what your eye focuses on. Look at his hat. These two values were exactly the same, but what are you looking at? You're looking at that edge of the hat first. Same thing over here. You could see like some pinks and purples there, but look at the intensity of these blues. That is color contrast, saturation contrast versus simple light and dark. Oh, thanks, Static Overdrive. Now, that, that one you just saw, that entire miniature, I want to say at least 60-65% of that was painted in black and white. Spark my gun, Thank you so much for that follow striding Aragorn. Oh my goodness. Wait a minute. <laughs> striding Aragorn. Yes. Aragorn, baby. We love our Lord of the Rings here. Oh, wait. Striding Aragorn? Or Strider? Yes, we've got, pl we've got plenty of Lord of the Rings action here, folks. In a little bit, I'll take you on a little tour through some of some of our Lord of the Rings. You know what? Just like uh, the Tomb Kings and and stuff, I gotta start making. I have to start making some uh, tours of my Lord of the Rings stuff. That's what uh, that's what I have to do. Is a little tour through Edoras and a little tour through. A little tour through the. So the eastern eastern realms. We're looking to do some more of our little more of our lighting right here. It can't be quite that uh, that liquid. Obviously, trying to reflect any kind of metal surfaces the most. That's why we got our action right down over here. Heck, those skulls, we can go lighter on those skulls. We can actually go lighter. We're just taking some of our titanium white here. We're mixing it with a little bit of that cadmium yellow. Because, yeah, we can definitely go lighter here. Even more intense light, especially on these things, uh, right closest to the figure here. Makes those skulls look even flamier. <laughs> yeah, the the and folks for the folks that are new, the the Patreon page. We've got many different levels there. Now the the general techniques that's your your five dollar level, but when you want to really dive into things like basing. And all those other subjects, and see how that interrelates. Like the basing here is very much related to what's going on to the figure. These are not two separate things. To me, this is all one thing. It's all very much one thing together. 
I, I kind of tried to promote that more. Thinking about the base and the figure, the object source lighting, all of that is it's part of the same thing. It's not these separate little things. I almost wish that people wouldn't do, well, here's how to do this. And that's all they do because, well, that's all they're painting. <laughs> and and that's great for that one part of the figure, but how do you make it mesh with the rest of the figure? That's great, you just painted a power sword. Well, what's going to happen to the armor around that power sword? Well, but now you got to see an object sword sliding tutorial. Well, that's quite not quite how these work. They're all integrated together, just like this. The marble painting, the object source lighting, the non-metallic metals, it's all part of the same thing. Seeing three separate tutorials would be kind of confusing because again, how would you make the, how would you get those all put together? Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun. Thank you so much, McDuff, for the follow. It is appreciated. So that's when I when I do a basing thing, it's part of I don't just base something and then never you never see it again. I will base something. It it's part of again a tutorial or a couple of tutorials. These things aren't in a vacuum. Yeah, they're not done in a vacuum. They are they're all part of the same whole. And actually, if you want to see how this figure was based, just go back and watch Monday's stream. Because that was our Reapercon prep stream. And we had all kinds of fun. We based 22 miniatures. We we were using bark. We were using sticks. We were using Sculpey. We were using the Sculpey baked with the texture roller texture in it. Uh, you know what? That needs to pick up a little bit of red here, too. What about the... Oh, gee. Yeah, see, here's a case. That's the wrong color light. We need to get the right color light on there. Boom. That's not a hard change to make. I'm looking over here just to... Wait a second. That should not quite be moonlight-ish color. That should be more like firelight color. It's an easy enough change to make. This is another reason why I just don't isolate. Like, okay, here's just object source lighting by itself. That's why I do them all together, because there's stuff like that. <laughs> what do you need to know? Well, how is that going to affect that metal now? Uh, let me see. I think we've got that all pretty well caught up now. This is the metal version of this figure. Speaking of some Reaper figures here, uh, let's see. Darth Jameson. I have some old GW Lord of the Rings minis from the early 2000. Well, here, let's take you through a little tour of what we've done Lord of the Rings-wise. Because, well, sadly, most of the Lord of the Rings figures are, wouldn't you say, they're mostly all from the early 2000s? Here, let's go to, let's uh, take a little tour here through, oh, Harad, and you know how old these kids are. And this is one of my army painting series here. And you, as you can see, that, that sort of sandy sand dune, I was really looking forward to that. Oh, look, we have the Rohirrim, and we've been adding the horse riders to these. And this is one of my more recent series right here. And now some of those are ancient. Some of those are the old metal figures. And you can see there's just a little spot of freehand here and there, maybe just a bit. The same Sculpey basing that you see here, look at that marble, right? The same idea. We did our Army of the Dead. And these Morgul Knights, that was actually the, that was the first fantasy stuff that I ever painted with the oils as part of one of my painting series. And I do believe somewhere here I've got one of my Easterlings, because this is another series that I did, and somehow I don't have my picture. Ah, here we go. So this is another one of my Lord of the Rings series, because I love my Easterlings. I actually do have a battle report on the YouTube channel with my Easterlings. And as you can see, we are we have been adding... These, uh, these guys were painted in oils, too. 
Uh, you can check out the YouTube channel. I've got Aowen on there. I've got Theoden on horseback. So, yeah, we love our Lord of the Rings. Ah, uh, Jano has to go to sleep. But thanks for joining, Jano. I hope you have a good night's sleep. Uh, I will be doing this again tomorrow. Actually, uh, since it's going to start earlier, you'll actually get a better chance to see more of it tomorrow, I think. Because, yeah, it won't be quite so late for you. Now we're now we're starting to add some darks back in here again, but these are more indigo blue because we want to. And this over here, that's uh, as much as I like reflected light, it doesn't need to be that light. So we are going to tone that down. We're mixing some of our indigo blue with that. The hat's a little better. That's not quite so light anymore. But you can see how it got blended real quick. No problem blending that. Now down here, we have you have these two lighter values, but we need to put a an even lighter value in between those. We're gonna grab a little bit of this, and right down the center, right down the center of this armor here, we are gonna pop ourselves some regular highlights. See that what we did just there? Because now, because this firelight here, it's very indirect. But now we've got ourselves some nifty, nifty lighting. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to do another one right down here. So it's light, dark, light, dark and light again. Now we're also going to catch a few ambient lights here. We've got plenty of the... We have more than enough, I think, of the firelight color. We need to get some ambient light color. And that's got to be pretty muted, actually. See how we just scumble that in there? And it mixes with what's already there. If it's not going to stick, we, we thin it down just a touch. And let's see what happens. Does that stick? Yes, it does. It just uh, had to be thinned down a little bit. Tiny bit, that's all. We'll do some more here. We'll thin it down a little bit more. Make that stick. That's about all it takes. Now the hair, I think we could use some lights on our hair. We did want to let that get, again, not dry. But I think we must have done something about maybe 40 minutes ago. We actually took some ivory black and some thalo green and darkened her here. And that really gave us a nice separation between the hair and the veil. But it's time to do just a couple of cooler lights on that. Same over here. I also have to take a little peek at the, some of the stuff that's going on with her arm here. We may need to go back in there because there was a mold line running through that. I think we're going to take some of our indigo, some of our ivory black, and we are going to... We might have to sharpen up some details just via the brush. See, it's right up top here. Yep. We'll just paint that in. And you can, yes, you can do the tiny details with the oils. It's actually easier with the oils because the brush can actually be... You can make it smaller than you can with water because water can only go so thin. Oil is thinner than water. <laughs> Therefore, you can actually get smaller, thinner brush strokes with the oils, believe it or not. More of our... No. We're going to touch a little touch of thalo blue here. Even a touch of that purple. And now, we're actually going to have to get some ambient light there, but this needs to be darkened down a little bit. It was sort of competing with the, the optic source lighting. It was, it was lighter than that. There's no way that ambient light could outshine the actual, well, the stronger light source that's coming from below. 
Now this we are going to, I don't know if you can see that, I want that to actually be more of a gold. So we're going to get some of our yellow ochre over here. It's yellow without being a flaming yellow. We're going to grab our, I think that's Brilliant Yellow Hue is the name of that color. Or Brilliant Yellow Light, something like that. It's one of the Williamsburgs. We might even thin it down a touch more. So again, less is more with the oils. Start out with less. And work your way down from there. I mean, that's, I'm really not joking. And we, oh, we got Lady B in the house and Machine God. How are you doing? Let's see, a game streaming night. Just popping in to see what you're up to in between matches. We are into, well, day three of ReaperCon. Technically, for me, it's day four because I count Monday as day one when I was doing all the basing on this. But we've had some fun with our marble here. Object source lighting, we've been chucking in a little bit of freehand here and there. But now we are going to see if we can't get ourselves some nice light, just a couple of pops of almost pure white in a few places here. That's on our armor, we're looking at like right up here. Looking for some separation here. Uh, on these pieces that are, I guess, supposed to really be, supposed to be gold-ish. Well, we're just going to pick up a couple of lights there. You see those little dots of light? That, that's what, it's almost like what you would do with a gemstone. But it does pretty much work for your non-metallic metals too. We're going to see if we can't get a, a nice little light edge along the top of that sword. We were kind of missing that a little bit. Let's see if we can't get some lighter things working. No, not on her, not on the glove. We might even have to make that glove a little bit darker. Although I do like the fact that there is a little wee bit of magenta on there. We're going to pick up a couple of highlights into her here maybe nothing on that side but over here we oh we need to get some definite gold in here good grief that's a little bit of the terra rosa mixed with our our yellow ochre i mean it doesn't have to be kicky in the face gold it just has to be more than a bluish gray that's bluish gray yes we love our reflections or reflected well, shadow colors too, but not quite that much of a shadow reflection. We can go a little bit less than that. The nice thing is, one of the things that we're always putting in with our golds is purple. So here we're practically getting that free addition, that, that free color. There's nothing I have to blend down here, right? There's no color matching that I have to do. I always like to have purple, especially in my gold shadows. Well, it's already there. That's still that pre-glaze that we threw on there a couple hours ago, eh, about th eh, three-ish hours ago. It sets the stage for what's happening now. I know that's a little bit different. Now, my acrylic painting is exactly the same. I know sometimes people ask, well, it's a big, it's a real different mentality, right? The oils from the acrylics. In some ways, they're really not any different. At least not, I don't consider them any different. I consider them both to be paint. And I'm painting a miniature. An awful lot of the same things apply because it's paint in a miniature. Doesn't matter if it's oils or acrylics. Does not matter one way or the other. What does matter is do you have something interesting to look at are there is there interesting stuff going on with the shadows did you take that brown cloak and did you just make it lighter brown and darker brown or did you sneak some greens in there 
that you maybe put reds in the shadows, just like our gold here. Guess what we're doing? I actually just threw some blue into that, into my gold shadows right here. Part of it has to do with color unity. Part of it has to do with color interest. You have to make things interesting to look at. Now, I, I know for folks that they want to do the competition painting thing, as someone who has had to judge those things at ReaperCons in the past, those judges, in the space of a few hours, they have to look at hundreds of miniatures. And, and since it's ReaperCon, a lot of them are the same miniature. And you can have something that's beautifully shaded, but when you're looking at that many figures, you're like, nice shading, nice shading, nice shading. Oh, what's going on here? That all of a sudden you notice that somebody did something more than just make something lighter or darker. They actually put something for you to look at. And guess what you do? You stop and you look at it. It's just, that's human nature. So if you're doing a red cloak and you're doing the shadows... And you say, you know what? I'm going to actually put some greens in the shadow of this cloak. Because, first of all, that's kind of more what happens in nature anyways. It also just it attracts the eye because you just notice, even subconsciously, somebody took some extra effort. And now you, you're like, what's in the shadows here? i got to see what's in the shadows here. So I just gave it a little bit more of a sparkle along the edge of that right here. Uh, let's see, Patty Kane. I uh, really love the broken stone colors and the texture on the back uh, base. Uh, I need to go back and watch the base videos. Yes. Um, where is our? Where are some of our other ones here? Where is ah? Here's our Griffin. So this is uh, one of the things we'll be painting tomorrow. That's just the bones, Griffin, right there. You can see we uh, sticks, bark. Uh, you see some of the texture paste in there, that gives us all of the all the crackles there. Now we also have so, ah, here he is. So we have Mr. Little Dark Sword Badger right here, and this is pretty much what we did on that Griffin base. It's sticks, it's some rocks, but he had that big old uh, what do you call that? The broccoli base. Broccoli base is all gone. This one, we took a sheet of Sculpey and we carved it with some wood texture. This one's a sheet of Sculpey and we gave it some brick texture and some paving stone texture. And we had a whole bunch of these with the uh, texture rollers, including... So this is from last night. This was the new... Elf Texture Roller from Green Stuff World. And this is the new Dwarf Roller Texture. Now Sunday, one of the things I like to do is work on basing. So this one right here is going to get a waterfall style treatment like this one here. The same materials. So we got tree bark here. You see our waterfalls hanging off, so we're going to have a waterfall hanging off the edge here. We're going to have water that goes right down here, all through in there. So that's what we're going to be doing, a lot of that on Sunday, with some of the foliage and such. Uh, Pat cane, we don't use a lot of it, we use a ton of it. We just use an absolute ton of it. So this is we were actually painting this one last night, because I want this one to be be dry by Sunday. So you can go back and watch that. Now, right up here, I have to decide how much more. I, we need some more of our glow up here, believe it or not. And we need some more glow down here. We need something down there. We will start off with this fanchion red here. It's, an, it's a nice opaque red. I swear it's like cadmium red deep, just without the cadmium. It does a lot of the same things. Ah, this is more like it here. That was just looking a little bit kind of dark right there. 
And there's your there's your link for your green stuff world texture rolling pins. I do suggest that uh, maybe you keep an eye on the green stuff world site and sometimes they will have a bundle deal on those things and that really makes them quite the steal. So we're going to get a little bit of our red texture on the underside of that sword. Now we go over to our this is our cadmium red scarlet otherwise pretty much known as cadmium red orange and we'll just get a little bit of this in here we don't need a lot of it but we can only get a couple of brush strokes in here before we got to go back and get some fresh some fresh paint now we want to we want to blend that we have to get all the paint out of this blending brush here and let's start pushing that around Now, ideally, maybe we wait 10, 15 minutes to do that, but we might be starting on another figure here soon. So we'll just push that. See how we got to look at that nifty little bit of orange glow on the bottom of that. The Baron says he saw uh, rollers 20% off the other day. Oh, and they're still 20% off. Heck, I'm wondering if they actually have some more new rollers. Like, maybe they've got... Uh, uh, some more, something besides the uh, dwarf and the the elf one, because they have a tendency to come out with things, and I don't know. And then I look back later and it's wait a minute, when did that roller come out? We're gonna get a little bit of our cadmium yellow deep into our cadmium red. Scarlet or cadmium orange. Look at what that does. See, that changes that a little bit. Let's get ourselves some a couple of more light. Look at how that the how far away we are from the ferrule on this. A gentle brush stroke. All of this is wet oil paint. That sticks because we got a gentle brush stroke. We have thinned this down to the right consistency. See how that's everywhere I put that, that sticks instead of just wiping away. That's when you know you've got the right amount of thinning or whatever going on with your brush. The paint doesn't stick. You gotta make it thicker. You gotta make it thinner. You gotta go one way or another. But the paint's always gonna let you know. Oh, thanks, Zambies. Folks, be sure to give Zambies the follow. Uh, actually. Hello, little harmons. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Thanks so much, Warren, for the follow. Uh, uh, you just reminded me I do have the tank roller. I've just, uh, unfortunately, it, it doesn't match any of the real-world tanks that I have. So that's why I was almost thinking that uh, I'd have to just see if I can dig out any 40K. I don't even know if I have any 40K vehicles left here anymore. But some kind of Imperial Guard vehicles I think I might... Uh, if I can scare some of those up on eBay or whatever. It's just unfortunately, yeah, it's uh, it's too wide and too big. It looks a little bit too modern in many ways for the uh, for the bolt action stuff. Well, most people wouldn't really be able to tell, but you know the rivet counters. They'd say, wait a minute. What, what tank tread is that? Uh, do we need? Yes, yes. Why not? Let's get some more of the orange in here, too. Let's lighten this up. Cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow deep. This I, I knew there was something I was forgetting over here. Well, let's get a little bit more of that onto, our, onto the marble here. Oh, what the heck. A little, a little bit of the cadmium yellow light get in there. And that doesn't want to stick. It means I gotta get in here with some thinner. And now that sticks a little bit more. We also need to lighten this up just a touch. Back here too. Get rid of some of the excess. That starts to make a little bit more sense. Ooh, we need to actually, 
We need to get a little bit of a red glow on this part of our rope here. No problem. Fanchion red. And it's only the outer edge here. Everything else is, is blocked by some, by either the sword or the other parts of the robe. And you can see that's just our pre-glaze that we put on there three hours ago. We can still use that to do some blending with. So that we can place this here and still mix it with some of that indigo blue. We'll mix some of our, again, our fanchion red with some of the with some of our cadmium red scarlet. That's the real deal. That's not a faux cadmium. That's the real deal. I think that's as much as we do here. See how we've got a couple different levels of lighting. We've got this hitting more orange. That's got less. And this got this has got even less here. Remember what this looked like a few hours ago? looked like a complete unholy mess. And if you've if you're kind of new here and you haven't seen this, go back and watch the VOD as we welcome in Stila along with Zambies. So how are you doing, Stila? And Kiki Turtle. Yeah, Kiki Turtle. Uh, yeah, hopefully this all stays... Uh, yeah, nothing weird happens like last night. But thanks for, thanks for sticking through that. I appreciate that. And well, welcome back. And here's some, here's some of the marble for you. I mean, the marble is easy enough to do in acrylics with the oils. It just it paints itself. You literally just you point at it and you say oils do this. It's like uh, it's like Alexa, right? Now, like Alexa, do this. It's like oils do that, and they just do it for you. Oils are the new Alexa. They're the painting Alexa. That's it. Ooh, that should go in the book of Wappleville, or book of Wapple. Yes, oils are the painting Alexa. Or, or whatever, uh, what's the other one, Siri or something like that. Now we're going to get some lights on this skull here because, well, I mean, that skull's sitting right next to it. Now we're going to get some lights on this skull. Maybe even some more lights on this one. Really starts to look flamey. Uh, let me see. I love the warmth. And oils don't even listen into your converse. They they certainly don't uh, send you things. It's like you would never all of a sudden have two starter sets of oils show up via Amazon through the oil version of Alexa. That would never happen. I'm going to get a couple more of my bright lights there. Yeah. So doesn't this just make you want to... It's getting ready for winter. Right? Just have a bunch of flaming skulls around. It it saves on electricity. Just to, instead of running space heater, these are the ultimate space heater. The skulls of, burning the skulls of your enemy is the ultimate is the ultimate space heater. It saves money. It's good for the environment. And and since they're newly you know, they're newly deceased, it's not fossil fuel. You're reducing the carbon footprint. Oil's got your back for sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's right, cat herder. Uh, oh, and folks, so Zambies, uh, you go, last Friday we were painting uh, this dragon right here. And this is from the Art of Zambies. And then Valandar the Red did the sculpting honors on it. And Mike Disney and I, we painted this live. And you can still watch this. So we did this again last Friday, and this is from the wonderful artwork of Zambies. So definitely give Zambies a follow if you want to see more artwork like that. Hey, Redman. Oh, Redman just got their oil set, too. Uh, Kiki Turtle asks question, do you buy these miniatures or do you make them and paint them? Most of these, uh, they are sent to me so that I can, like those Creature Caster ones, Kiki. You, you saw those. Uh, they send those to me. They're either box art or they're commission figures. And in some way, shape, or form, they are a commission. Now, I am hoping with this this new world of the 3D sculpting and, well, for me, not so much 3D sculpting, but the 3D printing, my ultimate goal is to be able to sculpt things 
scan them and then put them into the 3D world, get some supports on them, and then be able to actually make those STL files that can be printed. Ooh, we don't know when that's going to happen. That, that kind of depends on technology. But there will come a time, maybe, that I can actually start making my own. Uh, they would be more like busts and large scale figures. But I'm hoping maybe technology allows me to do that one day. Uh, I steal a red What set did you get? And did you try them out? Oh, wait, do we have No Way in here? Ah, oh, hey, No Way. Sorry if I missed you before. Now, this is a little bit of our brown matter alizarin. We're mixing that with a little bit of the purple here. There's a channel that goes right down the center of this sword blade here. Let's see if we can get that going here. It's right here. We got that paint thinned down. And now we've got the channel. Thank you so much, Luther, in Texas for the follow. Now, this... This, well, speaking of Reapercon being in, well, normally in Denton. So, so Uther, are you also taking part in the virtual digital Reapercon? And if you are, hopefully you were able to uh, get the classes you maybe were wanting to take. I'm going to try right here and get a bit of separation between these two zones. See what's happening? Oh, yeah, you can see it. You can see this. Look what's happening here. All of this is wet oil paint. But see how that's sticking? Right? Look at what that does. Now we're starting to get some turn going each way here. This is what I'm saying. You start out, it starts out pretty darn rough, but that's just the way you would. You don't start a house with window treatment and wallpaper. You start that house with an ugly old foundation. A nasty bit of a big old hole with with basically rocks and water, and that's what gets stuck. That's that's how you begin, and then in the end, you start adding that fun stuff. Speaking of fun stuff, we are gonna right here do a bit of our orangey red. Here we're gonna take some of our cadmium yellow. We'll mix it with that. And this is going to go separate the eyelid from the eyebrow. And if it doesn't stick, then I either have to thin it down or go the other way. Might have to make it thicker. Like here, thicker sticks. Sure enough, it, it had to be thicker. I might, just for the heck of it, go with him a bit more of my cadmium yellow light here. Now we're just going to hit the underside of this crown here. A couple of places. I think that starts to, yeah. Because the face here, that is, I'm going to say, just gets blocked by all of this. What's going to happen up here? Do we need to give her a different color on those lips? Maybe. Uh, Redmond got Wilson Wilson and uh from Amazon just got them. <laughs> and Noah says, I'm quiet. Well, we want to keep her lips relatively quiet here, but we also want to give them a little bit of color, so we've got sort of a magenta thing happening. Once again, oh, that's better. I think things were just again looking a little bit too grayish. can't be that much gray. We have to somewhere have some actual living skin tone. Like maybe on this side too. Let's take some of that away. We need to just sneak in some lighter skin tone on the other side. Yes, that's a shadow. We still needed to sneak in a little bit of lighter skin tone there. This will be tricky, but we also need to get 
a little more of the lighter skin tone up into the around the uh, top of the eye or the bottom of the eye here top of the cheek that's better and her upper lips certainly needs to be lighter so it's looking a little bit too dark I don't want her to have a mustache bottom of the chin maybe a little lighter too That's good. And do we have Wicked Elf in the house? We do. We do have a Wicked Elf there. And and Valerfa is back. Oh, look at this. A special Reapercon coupon. 20% off. And what are we talking about Wicked Elf? Well, if you like to have really fun foliage oh, like this. See that fern? That, look at all this fun foliage right here. That is all from Wicked Elf. There are also vellum butterflies, which I think we have a sheet of those here somewhere. Where is that sheet of butterflies? Aha! Look at this. So again, this is from Wicked Elf. And I absolutely had a blast with these butterflies right here. I've done several of my Dark Sword tutorials with those butterflies. Uh, especially the Monarch Butterfly one. That was just, that was a blast. I absolutely love doing that one. So, folks, be sure to check out Wicked Elf. Now you have no excuse because you've got uh, you got a major discount going on. And really, take a take a look at the butterflies too, because as much as I love me my vellum plants, those those butterflies really kind of changed everything. I've got some. Uh, Let's just say we've got some brand new uh, sea grass and some seaweed that we will be using in some of our future videos. So uh, Wicked Elf, hopefully the classes have been going well because Wicked Elf has also been teaching classes at the Virtual ReaperCon and I hope those have been going well. Yeah, Stila, those butterflies, man. Those things are just unbelievable. I've painted some as just kind of like regular monarch butterflies, but I've also painted some more like the avatar butterflies. So they, they're kind of glowing. Now here, we're going to change this up a little bit. We're talking about getting some of that magenta going. Maybe let's do a little bit more of that maybe even up here on that veil maybe even a little bit more up here too I don't mind if this mixes because that purple see how it's gonna shift that purple just a bit and we're just scumbling away this is not we're not trying to create several layers of paint we're just doing one layer we are just, we're basically using this brush as a blending brush. Same thing right there. See how we just took that one brush stroke and smoothed it out? Just like we took this one, we smoothed it out. Ah, did two plant classes and they went great. Well, that's really good. Now, how many more do you still have yet to do over the, uh, well, I assume you're, you're doing the, the Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. You know, I'm actually going to get some, some of the magenta over here, too. Just feeling like that is something I should do. Clean that up a little. Let's see, I might do some more with my lighting down here as well. Just checking my main light source. I think we can go a little bit lighter on the other side there. So we've got some of it right here. Maybe a touch of that lighter yellow in there. I'm just going to hit the bottom of the sword here and some of the fingers. How's about a bit more? And that might be too much. I'm going to save the, the lighter yellow for the bottom of the sword blade here. 
And we'll just string this right along here, see that nice and easy. But all the while, it is picking up paint. You can see there's there's orange paint on the end of that brush. It is picking up this yellow, or, or the yellow is picking up that orange paint. Every brush stroke you do, it's going to pick up the paint that's already there. That's why if you want it to be the, the same color, you have to keep getting fresh paint each time. Uh, one, uh, one class tomorrow, Quarantined Edition Weathering. Uh, Steela asks if you could buy only one purple oil paint, what would it be? That is a That's a quick answer right here. Now, if it's Williamsburg, it's going to be this Egyptian violet here. Now, we have checked the pigment color, which is this uh, pigment violet 23. I think it's dioxinine or diazinine purple in Windsor Newton and Gamlin. And it's, and it's basically the same thing. I, the grinding of it might be different, but it's either Egyptian violet or the diazinine purple. And you can look at the pigment color. So pigment violet 23. This is this is one one to rule them all because let's look at this. Now here is where I, I used some violet, some of that cobalt violet and some of the ultramarine violet. So there's some of your ultramarine violet. It's neat but it doesn't have the intensity, nowhere near the intensity of, well, our our purples there. So definitely give that a shot. I just, I absolutely love that. Now, uh, yeah, we're going to go with some, another bit of lighter coloration around her eye there. And see if we can reach it with this. Well, you might even have a hard time seeing that. I, I sort of like the fact that that is in shadow, but there's just a little bit too much shadow there. You can have too much shadow sometimes. Now we have that pretty thinned down, not lots of paint on there. We also need to get some light on that hair. I think I need to either thin this down, and if that doesn't work, I'm going to have to go the other way, and then we'll have to make it just thicker. However, thinner paint sticks. There we are. Now we need to get some lighter color in here for underneath the eye. <laughs> Maybe not that light. Just a hint of something there, and just a hint of something there. That's that's kind of on the dark side there. I just need it to be more of a mid-tone. doesn't have to be a highlight, but that was a little bit too much of a shadow. All right, so I think now we're getting it going here. We need some light under here. We need some light back here, too. There's just no shape back there. I'm actually going to, let, let's just take some of the Egyptian violet and let's mix it with some of our white here. We haven't really had a chance to play with just that sort of a mix. And we'll use some of this now in a few areas here. So it's really more of a bodice. That's not actually armor right there. Still, we want to get some lights on that. Maybe something besides just the blues. Even changing that to a little bit more of a magenta. I think we'll let this get lighter too. Yeah. The the glove. I'm gonna actually go the opposite way here. We will take oh, some purple and the ivory black, and we're gonna darken this. So that's another one of those semi glaze type things we're doing. But it's a very much a we just call it a dry glaze. I know it sounds weird. I do it with the acrylics all the time. It's not not just an oil painting thing. I kind of do that all the time. The oils make it a lot easier, that's for sure. Do we need it? No. Oh, I'm looking over here, too. We need some highlights on the top of the sword handle right here. 
I'm going to reach first for there our white combined with the cadmium yellow light. We hit that and that, I think that bottom edge needed a touch of it too. This needs something going. Wow, that's something got to happen there. I think that is better. I think we have to hit the rest of the sword blade. Some of her fingers, some of the handle, more of the orange. Could even be more subdued. Let me see. Uh, Cat Herder got a Winton tube in front of me. PB is a so diazinine purple. That's how I just kind of pronounce that. So now I just did because I was I put in another order and they were still on sale. I do now have a larger container of just the regular winter there it is. So now I've got a regular size container because we're gonna be going through that pretty quick. Now these are some other things that we're gonna try and experiment here. This interference blue. I'm gonna get try and get a couple more of these because I wanna use those on on our TMM, right? Because we want to do those neck runs. I want to do me some TMM on those neck runs, and I want to do that with the oils. I want to see if I can sneak in a couple of lights right there, and we're going to make a little chain of highlights here. Sort of the way the metallic or the non-metallics work here. Chains of highlights like this. That goes all the way. It starts up here, all the way up there, and works its way right down here. The knee, those, right on onto her, her shoe there. I know you can't quite see that because when I turn her, she disappears. Trust me, it's there. couple of more lights on the top of her head. Uh, let me see. Can't wait to see oil TMM. Sadly, I wasn't able to find any metal medium. So that's a, there's a couple of different types. Uh, the Vallejo one is the one that I've used for years and years and years. So that you should be able to find. Now, that's acrylic, though, obviously. That's acrylic. Ooh, do we want to get... Yes. I'm going to take a little bit of my... Thalo blue here. We'll get that up into here. Yes, yeah, let's get some of that right up into here. Maybe even a little bit cerulean blue gets into that. A little bit, yeah, a little bit of underlighting there. Can't hurt. And you know what? I don't know if you can see. It's going to be tough to see, but down here we got. We either have to go darker or lighter. First thing I'm going to do is we'll take some of our indigo here. First thing we'll do is try and do some darker lines. And maybe you can see it this way. And if those darker lines don't give me the separation, they give me some. I'm going to go back in here again with more of the... More of a lighter red. Don't know if you can see this, but we're lacking in some shape over here. And we're going to see if we can't do that. Maybe we'll even go so far as to add a touch of orange in a few spots here. Yeah. I think I just needed that. Now this... Put that little spot right in there. We're going to move this. Ooh, let's uh, get the paint out of this brush. If we're going to use this as a blending brush. So we'll take that yellow. So we're just going to push that around, and now it's it's less of a blob. More like a brush stroke. Uh, I know you have a tutorial on NMM, but how about different fabrics like silk or satin? Well, heh. <laughs> How about Rainbow Silk? That's one of the Army Painting series. Uh, I believe, well, 
it's the warrior sun so what I'm gonna do is just take you through the the slideshow of our song of ice and fire here and that's about the best way I can show you uh, okay song slide so check this out here now actually that was done with contrast paint so these are some of some of these were done in army painting series that was done in oils Kingsguard done in oils look at those robes that was very fun that was uh those are more of your uh, reaper clears and liner paints on those guys definitely reaper clears that was actually more contrast paints lots of contrast paints there but see those warrior sons now imagine those instead of red robes imagine those guys with rainbow robes i actually i took reaper pro white or pearl white from reaper and use that to basically make the robes look like silk or, or something along those lines and that was that was the craziest thing I've ever had to do because they have to look like they are in the books and that's how they were described in the books is having rainbow cloaks that were made of silk that was uh, that was the ooh, that was one of the more difficult army painting series to do now, let's see, would you ever attempt a glass reflection of the miniature on the marble? Uh, actually, glad you mentioned, uh, I don't have it here, but it's going to be on the Patreon page. It's a, there's a water thing. So it's a wild elf on a log, and there's a big body of water in front of him, and I want to try to uh, reflect him and the moon into the water. Now, we do have this one here. So I don't know if we'll have a chance to, to get to this. Maybe we even try and get to this one later tonight. But I was thinking of maybe her reflection in because there's going to be water here. So I was thinking of maybe doing some, some water there and doing some kind of a reflection on that. So thanks for reminding me. Let's just set that over there. Maybe we'll get to that later tonight. Now I, I think I have done that in the past. Oh, um what I, I if someone does a i don't know maybe someone actually sculpts a 3d like 3d sculpts galadriel in her mirror uh, that uh, what's uh, that uh, frodo and sam are looking into because what i like to do is actually paint the burning of the shire into the <clears throat> into the pool i thought that would be really fun but that miniature you can't find i don't even i suppose you could maybe find it on ebay for about a bazillion bucks but it would be fun if some it doesn't really it doesn't have to look like movie galadriel or anything like that it could just be any old sorceress or whatever and something that looks like a mirror pool it doesn't even have to be looking like the lord of the rings version it, it's close enough I would definitely, uh, especially if it was done in 72 mil. I don't know, maybe I just have to sculpt that myself. It wouldn't be 3D sculpted because, well, I can't do that. Now, see, I'm, I'm starting to get a little lights here on the edges. Oh, I had that one too, Nessie. And I sold that one up on eBay, just like most of my other Lord of the Rings figures, not realizing that there would come a time where you'd never be able to get it again. So now see how we're starting to do a little bit of shiny here on the edge of our marble. Just a little bit of shine, more like the moonlight is hitting this here. So we're going to do that again on this edge. So it's kind of broken on the end there, almost like a beat up sword blade or something. And now we pick up just a few more lights here on the rocks. Oh, we have paint miniatures back in the house. How are you doing? We're just we're gonna catch again some of our some more of these lights here. We don't want them to be challenging these. We don't want that because we want that that light sourcing to keep working. We don't want to lose that. Okay, we do have the edge of that sword blade. Someone was thinking I didn't have that. It would seem that I do. We have our folds over here. Mm, still might have to do some more stuff over here. 
still also have to see is there something more that should happen with that blade I think so is it going to get more of it no we're just gonna go darker with this we'll take some of our crimson here because believe it or not there's actually no paint right there just our pre glaze that's all it took over here we'll just uh, we'll give that a little bit of a blend uh, I'm glad you're doing okay there paint miniatures okay some more shadows into that skull right there what's gonna happen over here more light yes more uh, of the orange light kinda getting cast onto the onto the marble there but more orange less of the uh, less yellow more orange boy look at this little bit of uh, cadmium red went such a long freaking way still working with that this is the other reason why I like uh, putting the oils into the containers you are less likely to take that tube and just go and put a whole bunch of it out there and yes it will make that sound or you can put them you can take a little bit of that paint put it in a smaller jar like this it just promotes you to put out smaller amounts smaller amounts less is more on your palette too it's not just on the miniature even on the palette less is more or at least less is less money that you're gonna burn through by having to throw away oil paint that you didn't use I think we might even get a little bit more of a lighter orange onto the marble right over here we'll probably go back in with our blending brush like we've done before but we need to get some lighter orange in here I did thin that down so that it would stay ah look at how that sticks just a little bit of thinner and man does that stick we somehow that side of the skull was not being lit at all so we'll make that lighter touch more of our cadmium yellow here have I thinned it down enough yes I have because it sticks we might even make that a little bit lighter especially closest to where this other skull is and yes we thin it down enough uh, let's see Valerfa says I love dropper bottles for all my paints as we welcome in Tootie Foodie how are you doing this one uh, this is a figure that I've actually wanted to paint for a long time now I painted the bones version of this a while ago now yeah, let's get down to this is actually part of a war band that I painted for the Witchborn folks so you can see her all the way on the left hand side over there so those are all just bones miniatures like the you know the floppy bones right those are all bones you can see look at the object source lighting does you give them all that kind of a dark elf sort of a or a drow sort of a skin tone look at that let's get a little bit closer to her here yep so there is a you can see we gave her some uh, nice little eyes there this guy is also bones little dwarf is also bones now these aren't bones but this was actually a little I uh, was a commission set for a friend of ours because his D&D group needed a bunch of characters these these are going in the wayback machine those are some old sculpts right there and this one here take a look at that texture roller that's from green stuff world that you can watch this on the YouTube channel that's just James Wapple YouTube so it's a little little tour through the Reaperville right there now let's see painted with thin oils out of the jars yesterday for the first time ah they painted a lot better I'm glad that worked it, it's kind of uh, it's kind of crazy and magical isn't it And I discovered it totally by accident. That was because I was using the Migamma oil brushers, and there was colors that they didn't have that I had in regular oils. I said, you know what? 
I must be able to just make something like this myself. And sure as you know what, I was able to make them myself. You know what? We need some more, a bigger amount of white in the eye. I was just looking at my, my other one that I painted. And let's see if I can make the eye a little bit bigger here and just bring more attention to the eye. So there's her, yeah, her upper cheek. Let's see what we can do with the eye itself now. Ah, that's better. Yeah, see that little tiny dot now? Her eye stands out a little more. I also want to bring out some of the armor up here, too. We Now I think we can get some brighter lights up here. On whatever that is. Maybe that entire edge gets a little bit lighter. Do we need... No, I don't want to get that anyway. I was thinking of uh, putting some more lights on the veil, but that... I don't think so. And that bit of a crown... I don't know, maybe that should be more of a red gemstone or something. That might just be too much light up there. Let's go the opposite way. We're going to change something here. If I don't like it, I can change it back in a hurry. Ah, uh, yeah. See, this. I like this a little better. It's almost more like a big gem and a crown or something. Yeah, that's a little... That's, uh... That could also benefit from a bit of our brown matter. Darken it up a bit more. Yeah, every, there was just too much... Ironically enough, there was just going to be too much light over here. Everything was light, light, light. We needed to just get some dark. And now that starts to make a bit more sense. Alright, definitely more of a fan of that. Uh, let's see, paint miniatures, do you thin them before you put in the dropper? Yes, we do. Uh, oh, look at this. Look at this. So you can actually see these are some, they're just dead blister packs right here. And you can see where I mixed in. So that's our, that uh, bright yellow that you see me using. This is the same blister pack that I mixed that in. And I just squeeze the oils in there. And I put my thinner in there. And that is always the... Well, for me anyway, because this is so easy to get on Amazon. It's Speedball is the company. Mona Lisa is kind of the brand of this, the sub-brand. And it's a high-quality odorless paint thinner. I just get this on Amazon, no problem. If you can't get that in Europe, this is really your next best bet. And you should be able to get this anywhere in Europe because, well, it's made in Spain. So you should be able to get that. And Oh, and actually... While you're getting that, you might want to get some of this too because I love this stuff. That's also very good. So a couple of handy MIG products if you're in Europe and you can get MIG stuff. Uh, maybe maybe treat yourself to that. Maybe treat yourself to that sand and gravel glue because I use that. Like I said, I use it all the time. If you want to glue your cut leaves to a base, that sand and gravel glue does a good job. Ah, uh, great paint miniatures. Now I'm looking here. So we've got enough light there. I don't want to really do too much on that. Here, my finger, basically I've been hitting it with my finger a lot. So I've been wiping away a little bit of my shading. So here is that, well, faded ultramarine blue of oils. It's not faded ultramarine. We just call it that just for fun. Because it sure as heck acts a lot like it. We'll get ourselves a little bit more light. To, but look, again, it's not much paint on that brush. You see how much of like a dry brush that practically is there. It will always be that in my heart. Uh, we've renamed a whole bunch of colors. We've got felonious red. We've got we've got our faded ultramarine. We have capone green. What is it that I always say how much I like how regular oil paints just have 
oil paint names instead of all the creative names. And what have we been doing the last week? We've been renaming colors. But we know what they are. We know what they mean. Uh, nobody else does, but at least we do. Oh, you know what? I'm going to get me a little bit of my white in here. Just a touch with that. Now, i got to say that, and that's from Holbein, that color right there. Well, first of all, pricey. Second of all, it does act a little bit differently when it's been thinned down. Now, our berry white green is a little bit less so, but, you know, how much we love our berry white green. A.K.A. barite green. We just sort of rename. That's like I say, we keep renaming paints here. Now, let's... Uh, do a little comparison here. So we have a lot of the same colors here. Here we had a little bit more in the way of teal, but we have that darker hair color. Obviously a little bit different on the skin color. But you can see that same purple, that diazonine purple slash Egyptian violet that we used on the dress right here. And you can see how we, we use, used, look at that, we were using some of the magenta that crimson to lighten up the dress a little bit. So yeah, we've done uh, a lot of similar things that we did on that uh, big uh, big child creatives bust. I do have some more of those. Uh, one of them is the f is the uh, the pilot kind of the World War II pilot lady. I've got her. I know we did the, we already did the orc bust. I'm trying to think if I've got any other big child creatives, but I've got some other busts. I don't even, I couldn't name you the companies. I'd have to look at the packaging. So I'm just sneaking in a little bit of my sort of moonlight color into here. Maybe just toning some of that down. All right. I look at this, do I need that? Oh, okay, from down here, to, yeah, let's just keep a little bit of that glow right there. I was thinking maybe we got to tone that down, push that around, but no. I do need to get some right in here. And we're going to thin it down. Thin that down. Pop it on this side here. Just a little touch of it right there. We need a little bit of reflected light on that that's not part of our object source lighting. We also need to push this along. There's a couple of things here that are just big old blobs of paint. We don't want blobs of paint sitting there. We are going to take that blob and we're just going to push that like we do, say, on the, our sword blade there when we're doing our mixing. we got another area of paint here that we've got to push around. So see that? It's right on the shoulder here. Just take it and push that along. Now this, we need to make a change here too. I'm going to get into some of our that lighter blue, yeah, it can't, this is another area where we got to make a change here. We're going to take some of our indigo, because why, we're starting to basically add light to something that should almost be a shadow there. That's better. Now we'll go back and give that some reflection, because strangely enough, the armor reflects off the armor. It's like a weird infinity mirror sort of thing. So that's more like that. Just needed to be cooled down. Let me see. What is the proportion of paint thinner in the bottles? And as was mentioned, it's always going to be different. That took an insane amount of thinner. This also took a ton of thinner. And I'm looking for wherever my Terra Rosa is here. That took practically none. It's just, it's the darndest thing. The cobalt violet took an awful lot, but somewhere is my Terra Rosa. That one took barely any. These two took a ton. So these two were almost 
geez, 70% thinner. The, the, the indigo in Terra Rosa, practically the opposite. Like reverse those. Almost 70% paint versus 30% pigment. Uh, let's see, what colors from the Windsor Newton oil range would work best if they were to try and get the fluorescent fire effects? Well, uh, from the starter set, uh, let's see, from the Windsor Newton oils, well, basically, you want to get yourself a some kind of a cadmium yellow light, a cadmium yellow medium, and this is one we've been using a lot this cadmium scarlet we have been using this a lot on all of our lighting effects so if you have to have any cadmium yellow light see where i'm pointing there cadmium yellow medium and then something like this a cadmium orange cadmium scarlet something like that those are the ones you are going to want now let's do some Film noir that has been requested. So what does that mean? It means we take away the color, and then we're going to take a look at this. That's first we'll go like this. So our marble, well, you don't see any of that red glow, and it. it's totally gone. So you could see how the impact of value is everything here. Like the lighting here, the only reason we see any lighting is because of the value right there. But you don't see that, that contrast here. As we hold it this way, you don't see the bluish color over here versus that orange color over here. You don't see the orange here versus the bluish marble over there. It makes a huge, huge difference. Let's hold this again over here. Again, you don't see any of that color. Now, let's just uh, take a look at these two different marbles right here. There we go. Now look at the difference when we bring back that color. Look at the difference that makes. I mean, this this went from, yeah, slightly lighter to, oh my gosh, it's on fire. Don't step on it. Look at over here. This went from, oh yeah, it's marble, to, oh my gosh, it's on fire. Don't step on it. it it's just, it's unbelievable. what the, And you can do this with your phone. Take a picture of it. Kill the color. Put it side by side with a color picture. The where that sort of took hold was actually last year at ReaperCon. It was literally a year ago, practically a year ago today, where people wanted critiques on their miniatures, and they walked up to me and they said, "Hey, they said, hey, thanks for the follow, Sir Mantastic. Thank you so much for the follow. Ganoff appreciates it too. They they wanted critiques on their miniatures, and I said, well, I'm going to put this under the camera. Everybody's going to see it." And the first thing I did was I turned it black and white, like that. And they all, I just looked at them. They didn't say anything. And they said, yeah, give me that back. I'll be back in a half an hour. They came back and they said, all right, put it under the camera. Let me see. And I did the same thing again. They said, ah, all right, give me that again. I'll be back in five. They, they did that a couple of times. And after a couple of times of seeing it under the camera, black and white, that told them they said you know what i need to get more of my i need to do something with those either there's no shading there's too little shading too much or they had absolutely no color contrast you can have all the value contrast you want which is great if it's a charlie chaplin movie but it's less if you want it in techno color gee whiz most people don't even probably know what that is but just just to kind of ponder that, that, that influence of saturation and everything else. Well, we can do this with something. We can do this with another thing, too. Here, let's try. Well, let's even try something like uh, the horsey here. So you got the green. Let's just hold it like this. Kill the color. You can see all the shading in that horse. We've got plenty of shading right there. Oh, let's do something even more tricksy. Let's do something more tricksy here. Let's find ourselves a gray horse. Two horsies. 
That's practically the same horse. Let's bring the color back. Uh, a little bit different, eh? But you don't... I mean, look at that. Look at the difference. Two horses. Black and white. Take away the color. Makes a huge difference. This is something that I say, give, give it a try. Phone camera, every phone camera has the some little stupid app, something like that, that they'll let you do something like that. We need to do some, speaking of reflected light, no, 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 no. We're going to take our indigo here. Uh -huh, that's it. Some indigo, a little bit of this. A touch of that thick little blue. What I like to do is we got to reflect some of that marble over there. See that? Look at a tiny bit of blue. And as we fade this, it's barely noticeable. But we got a reddish purple up here, and now we got a bluish purple down here. But now there's. Yeah, that looked okay being darker. But guess what? A little bit of reflected light. Not only does it look more interesting, now our marble makes a little bit more sense.